Afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We're about to start the closing session. Could you please um, take your seats? Thank you very much. We'll just wait 30 more seconds. Thank you very much. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the closing session of the IGF 2018 annual meeting. On this podium to my right, we have Ms. Lynn saint Amour, Chair of the IGF 2018 Multi-Stakeholder Advisory Group. And to her right, we have Mr. Fabricio Hochschild, Assistant Secretary General for Strategic Coordination in the Executive Office of the United Nations Secretary General. On his right, we have Ambassador David Martino, host country co-chair of the IGF 2018 Multi-Stakeholder Advisory Group. And right at the end there, we have Mr. Pierre Bonis, co-chair of the French Multi-Stakeholder Organizing Committee. Thank you. Uh, this session will be in, divided into three parts. We will first have brief introductory remarks by the chairs and the host country. And then we will have our traditional open mic session. Uh, you can see the microphones right there. Uh, you can just line up there and we'll take you alternately um, the rows. And then after that, we'll have the final closing reflections from the community hosts and the United Nations Secretary General's representative. Uh, without further ado, I'll pass the floor on to Lynn St. Tamor. Thank you. Thank you, Changatai. I'd like to take just a moment to thank the IGF community, those participating both online and on site, for all the efforts here this week and over the last year. Not only for the thoughtful, excellent sessions of this annual meeting, but for all the work in the intersessional activities, supporting four best practice forums, 17 dynamic coalitions, the major intersessional policy effort, connecting and enabling the next billions, which is in its fourth year, and of course, for all the efforts of the 111 national, regional, and youth IGF initiatives. Those activities enrich and inform all our work across the IGF ecosystem and are so very important. There'll be many more thanks later, um, but our work here is not done yet. After some remarks by the host country, as Chengatai said, we will turn to the community for the open mic session, where we look forward to your reflections on this year's IGF and of course, on your thoughts for the work and the year ahead. We have nearly an hour and a half scheduled for that session, so please do get your thoughts and comments ready. We have many vehicles for providing feedback, and of course the feedback is really essential to our ongoing improvements. Specifically, I'd like to remind everyone to take a few minutes and respond to the question, what impact can the IGF or the IGF ecosystem have over the next year on the topics we discussed here this week. Um, we were looking for feedback specific to each session, but feedback by tags or main topics um, is also very helpful. Again, the more concrete the suggestion, the better. And please, again, if you can, do be specific about the workshop or, or the topic. You can actually find many links um, from the home page, which say something like feedback here or feedback form here. Um, before welcoming Ambassador Martino to say a few words, I'd like to take just a moment to thank UNESCO for all this support to this year's IGF. UNESCO is one of our partners in this World Summit on the Information, or WISIS, journey, and we appreciate their active engagement. I would also like to acknowledge that ITU Secretary General Hulin Zhao was very sorry that he could not be here due to the overlapping dates with the ITU plenipotentiary. ITU is, of course, another important WISIS partner and we look forward to catching up with them soon. So now to introduce, amb introduce Ambassador David Martino, the Ambassador for Digital Affairs in the Ministry for Europe and Foreign Affairs, France. He is, of course, the co-host for this year's IGF. As many of you know, the French government and David personally stepped in to ensure there was a host for this year's IGF 
when we found ourselves without a host at a very late date. This, of course, followed a similar situation the year before when the government of Switzerland and the UN offices in Geneva similarly stepped in to help. We're very grateful for Switzerland and for France's support to the IGF and for such a clear demonstration of your support to multi-stakeholder processes. We look forward to Berlin next year. This offer to host has been with the UN for several years, and we are also very grateful to them for their support. Of course, this means that we will be in the European region for three years consecutively, not by design, but by necessity, and through the exceptional efforts of a few governments. We value diversity in all things in the IGF and in the internet governance community, and certainly in venues. It's key to broadening engagement with other stakeholders. And so I'm asking governments in other regions to please consider hosting an IGF in the future. Um, Changatai and I are both here at your disposal for any additional information. But seriously, if we really want diversity in our venues and we want to broaden our engagement, we need um, more support, more offers to host IGF from other parts of the world. With that, Ambassador Martino, thank you, and the floor is yours. Merci, Lynn. Thank you very much, Lynn. I'd like to begin by giving the floor respectfully and in a friendly way to my co-chair from the organizing, organizing committee from the civil society, Pierre Bonis. But first, I would like to thank, in addition to you two, Lynn St. Amour for her constant support, her tenacity, for her experience, and for her passion for all the topics that we address, for her commitment to IGF, which gets her out of bed in the morning every day to ensure that IGF is still alive and well and can be provided to other host countries and throughout the world as well. So Lynn St. Amour, it is high time that you were acknowledged in this way by France because for those who don't know, St. Amour is one of the best Beaujolais wines actually. And it's also one of the most well-known wine names in the world, St. Amour. So anyway, thank you very much. Thank you, Changatai, and the entire team, the Secretariat of IGF as well. And now, Pierre, you have the floor. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, David. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. So we're reaching the end of this 13th IGF. And as we know, the session that will be opening in a few minutes, the taking stock ceremony, it's going to be very fruitful and will allow us to take stock of the progress and solutions that we've found or have not found by the stakeholders during these three days of intensive work. And so David and I, on behalf of the entire organizing committee, believe that this 13th IGF in Paris might be a milestone in the IGF's history for several reasons. First of all, there's been a very high level participation, about 3,000 participants, and they are all very diverse. And also, there has been a very high level statement made by the UN and by the host country, which also is unprecedented in the history of the IGF. And lastly, there's a piece of news that is pushing all of our stakeholders and the IGF to work even harder to find agreed solutions to tackle new challenges that we're facing, which might indeed be quite difficult to resolve and to as well take advantage of all of the new opportunities that we've been given by digital technology. Now, <clears throat> we are very proud to have been taking part in this forum together with UNESCO and our friends at UNESCO have been very helpful. I'd like to thank Sasha Rebell and Judy Van Zellen for their work for their very diligent work under very difficult circumstances to host all of us here. This is difficult because of us, in fact, I didn't want to say that directly, but yes, that is true. So I'm quite sorry uh, to the UNESCO staff. I know that sometimes we've made our job difficult, but it's a great pleasure for us to work with you. 
and it's very important for France to be taking this multilateral approach. We've seen that it can be very effective, not just fair and equitable. And that's why we've established a multi-stakeholder organizing committee since we need to make sure that it's effective, that it works well, and we've shown that it does indeed what work. And so for David and myself, the time has now come to thank all the individuals and organizations that are involved in uh, our forum on a voluntary basis, donating their time and their energy to ensure that all of you could be here during these three days and could help work together to find solutions for tomorrow's internet. And I'd like to thank, begin by thanking our friends and partners from French civil society, especially the French chapter of the Internet Society, is in France, as well as Nicolas Chani, thank you very much, and Lucien Castex as well, thank you. A few years ago, four years ago, in fact, we created the French chapter of the Internet, and thank you for making that a reality. And Digital Renaissance is a French think tank led by Jennifer, sitting in the second row. Thank you, Jennifer, for all of your work. We owe a, you a great debt, David Cumblet as well. Thank you. I don't see you here uh, in the audience, although you're extremely tall. Uh, but thank you in any case for all of your help, your precious help. And of course, I'd like to also thank the Secretary General of AFNIC, as well as all of the team. Thank you, Pierre. Thank you to your team. And Sophie Kanak as well, because she's led the communications team. I just must say, Benoit Ampour. And our commercial team as well. Thank you very much, not only for having personally taken part in this meeting and for being so willing to make your time and expertise available, as well as that of your team, that obviously has been extremely valuable to us. And there's someone else I would like to mention as well, Laurent Farrelly. If we don't hear anything, it's because he's probably patrolling. But in any case, from ICANN, <coughs> who has provided us his personal assistance, and that of ICANN, as well as Sebastian Bastulet, a member of the board of ICANN, and an activist. Thank you, Sebastian. He's been an activist from the very beginning. We owe you a great deal as well. I'd like to also thank Manji Marzug for Orange who has helped us so much intellectually and in other ways. Stefan Richard as well for taking part in our high-level panel. Thank you, Stefan. And I'd like to thank Jean-Pierre Ferron as well from the Salagrea agency, this event planning agency that has helped us so much in uh, holding this event and has helped us to host you under the best possible circumstances. Pierre, now you have the floor to continue. And on behalf of the organizing committee for the civil society and technical sector, we'd like to thank the governments, of course. And I would also like to begin by warmly thanking Nevin Ramuni, who has been doing excellent work for the past few months on this topic, as well as Lajmari Shraba. Lady Mukit, as well as Laurent Stefanini and the French permanent delegation to UNESCO, who has helped us a great deal. And uh, in this uh, task force at the heart of organization, we've also had uh, within the organizing committee various agencies that have ties to the public sector, government agencies that have played a key role. I'd like to thank them, including the National Council for Digital Technology, Charles-Pierre Stoffy, his Secretary General, and all that they have done. I'd like to thank them as well for the uh, bags, Mary Ombelon, as well as Antoine Sambarche. Thank you 
very much for all of your help. So those are all of the individuals and groups that have helped promote the IGF for those who have not heard of it, for those who are attending their first IGF. And it's given us great pleasure to welcome you here under the best possible circumstances. Thank you. Thank you. A sincere thank you to all those who've been mentioned and those who may not have been mentioned. And on the behalf of all of us here at the IGF, I'd like to thank all the volunteers who have done truly extraordinary work over the past four years. And we owe them a great debt as well. I hope you've had fun. I hope, I hope that you've learned some things, that you've amused yourselves. And I hope that we can count on you in the future. You've done such excellent logistical work, uh, note-taking, report writing, hosting, and so on. And there are so many of you, so many, that I couldn't possibly cite all, mention all of these schools and universities that you come from. But in any case, thank you to all of you. You are playing a very important role in the IGF ecosystem, especially in France. Thank you all. And since we still have a bit more time, I'd like to now give the floor to two prominent figures in the French technical community because they deserve it, two leaders, two entrepreneurs who have taken part in these debates over the past three days and embodied the ideas, solutions, and values that I think we all have tried to promote through these discussions. I'd like to now ask Alexandra Zapolsky, who is the founder of Linagora, and who also is a member of the National Council for Digital Technology, and who has been promoting open source software in France and Europe for a long time. And I'd also like to ask Le Eric Leandri, the founder of Quant, to come up here for similar reasons. Alexandra, you now have the floor. Monsieur l'Ambassadeur. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador, David. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a true honor for me on behalf of my company to be taking part in the closing ceremony of IGF 2018. I would like to thank Ambassador Martino, as well as the president of AFNIC, Pierre Bonis, for having invited us to take part in this event alongside our friends from Quant. We share the values of all the participants of the IGF. We believe in the benefits of a free and open internet. For us, this internet is the guarantee and the cornerstone of a neutral internet. And net neutrality is currently under attack by some in order to benefit economic giants. We do not want the internet to essentially become a tool, a network where only commercial services are provided. We think that not everything can be bought, not everything can be sold. The internet must not simply become a market for time or data. That's not the model our society is based on. That's not the value that our society is based on. And similarly, we do not believe that a government, no matter how powerful it might be, should be the sole guardian of the freedom of citizens. We believe that there should be a third voice, a digital voice based on democratic values of freedom, those that we've been upholding in France since the Enlightenment. And we share these values with many other countries, European countries as well as non-European countries. And these values, of course, rest on ethics as well as respect for privacy. We are facing a massive challenge that must be tackled through collective efforts, through governments and civil society, to ensure that the spirit and the principles behind the internet are maintained. 
A free and open internet is what allows all of us to be placed on an equal footing, to coexist, to think, and to take action in cyberspace. We must protect this common good for humanity. That is the challenge that our generation is facing. It also is the responsibility that falls upon each and every one of us, thinkers and doers on the web. And together with my company, Lena Gore, I've been promoting these values for 18 years. We've never chosen, we've never taken the easy way out. Everything that we've developed has been open source software, free software, what we call free free, actually. So free in terms of freedom and free in terms of price as well. And like we the source of pride does not come from our turnover, but from the positive effect that we are having. That is, we're helping to allow everyone to have free and open access to information, especially in developing countries. And this is a source of great satisfaction for me. And we've talked for hours about digital inclusion and the issue of uh, digital training. We know we don't have much time. We can't go on forever talking about this. And so I'd like to say that it has been a great honor and a great pleasure for me to be here with you over the past three days. My dear friends, I'd like to take a vow here. Let us ensure that our internet is great. Make internet great again forever. Thank you. J'invite Eric Leandri, fondateur de Quant. I'd like to ask Eric Leandri, the founder of Quant, to come up to the stage. Eric is also a leader in the French technical community, and once again, his company model upholds values that are important to all of us. Quant is an internet search, search engine that is that was GDPR compliant before the GDPR. Eric, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting us, for inviting Quant. Thank, I'd like to thank all of you. I'm perhaps not quite as eloquent as all of you in thanking others. I'll, go just go, I'll cut straight to the point. Now, I'm very happy to be able to be speaking to you at the closing ceremony of the 13th IGF. And it is a great honor, especially because this year IGF is taking place at UNESCO, so at one of the leading world institutions that's responsible for promoting international law and human rights. Over the past three days, we've also discussed ways to protect what has made the internet such an ex exceptional platform from exchange between people and cultures, and promoting economic and social d uh, development while trying to correct some of the abuses that have occurred in modern society. And we also are commemorating the attacks of November 13th, which, of course, lead us to reflect more deeply about the important dialogue that we should have between all of us, as well as the role of France. And this is a responsibility that all of us share. Now, I founded Quant in 2011, which was when the UN Human Rights Council adopted the UN guiding principles for uh, human rights and business, bringing together all the actors of economic, the economic sphere. Uh, and we have the responsibility to uphold fundamental rights and human rights throughout everything that we do. And this is what has always steered our action uh, here at Quant, especially when it comes to uh, respect for privacy and freedom of access to information, which must be protected and promoted in the same manner that we design our products. So privacy by design. And we also have chosen some very beginning to break some old habits in the internet, not to collect the data of our users. And this ensures that we respect the privacy of internet users as well as uh, we can ensure that we don't shut in internet users into their own echo chambers. We give everyone the ability to access the diversity of the world. That is the potential of the internet. 
this is the world of the future. We're not trying to impose our model, but we think that this model could inspire others and should be promoted because it involves a sustainable digital, digital world. None of us can continue forever alone without abandoning some of our values. We cannot continue to uh, use people's personal data to increase our, to boost our bottom line. We need to respect the security of people's data. We know that we cannot play both sides of the game. We cannot try to stir up controversy among internet users by play, pulling their heartstrings and uh, playing on their personal data and at the same time claim that internet, the internet is what makes people radicalized. How is that possible? This is a sort of digital schizophrenia that we need to overcome if we want to transition toward a newer and greener world. And this we need in order to do achieve this to preserve our ecosystem, our environment, the entire planet. And we can start in the digital world. We have to promote sustainable digital development. It's essential to do so. And in order to achieve this, we have to give internet users a wide range of choices or tools that they can use. And regulators have to ensure that public and private actors play their role. This freedom of choice and regulation has been threatened by certain monopolies or oligopolies that are unprecedented now. The President of the Republic, Emmanuel Macron, spoke to you Monday. And he, as he said, we need to break away from the dichotomy between California and China or an internet that is fully controlled or completely open. As a, the CEO of a private company, we, I think we do need more regulation and we need rules for the game that are fair for everyone. We must fight against the abuse of the dominant market position, which uh, in this way, we can provide customers with a real choice in the internet services they choose to use. And it is the citizens that are voting through their choice of internet service. We need Americans, we need the Chinese, we need the Russians, and we also need Africa, India, South America, the rest of Asia. Europe as well, all of the continents of the world, even a sixth. So therefore, we need the United Nations. More than ever, we need to work together in order for the, in the Internet to be a network that is protected and that above all is neutral to all and forever. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we will now start our open mic session. So if anybody from the audience wants to uh, make an intervention, can you please line up uh, those two mics, one to the left there and one to the right. And also if you are online, um, please feel to use the speaking queue. Um, the instructions are on the front page. Uh, thank you very much. I think you were first. Um, we're going to alternate between the queues. Um, Ambassador Martino and I are the co-chairs for this particular session. Um, we really want to hear from the community, so we will be taking notes, and of course it's transcribed, streamed, and archived. Um, we will attempt to respond as little as possible to allow maximum time for the community, but we really want everybody to rest assured that um, we're taking very, very careful note of any of the, the comments. Um, we're running timers for two minutes. Again, that's to facilitate um, participation online. And um, again, we'll just alternate back and forth between the queue. And if you could state your name, um, country, and the stakeholder group you're representing and speak slowly for the record. Um, thank you. Thanks, everyone. Good afternoon. I am Lily from Ghana and an Internet Society Youth at IGF. Hello. It's my first IGF and one that has been a lot helpful. I sat in a couple of sessions and a couple of messages were my highlights, particularly the one on digital inclusion and accessibility. I sat in a session for bridging the digital divide in accessibility with people living with disabilities. 
I realized the divide, the divide could stem from two places. One, the devices, and two, accessibility to network infrastructure. In terms of network infrastructure, we have seen many initiatives to enhance infrastructure provision. There are remains a rift with devices that are all encompassing and suitable for all persons with health conditions that are limited. It is in this light that I suggest, in addition to the multi-stakeholder nature of the IGF, we have a clear interdisciplinary approach to, so much as to com capture um, thoroughly all sectors of human engagement. This will further enhance our quest to build an internet of trust by first capturing the trust of everyone by constant engagement. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my name is Steve Zeltzer. I'm with LaborNet APC in San Francisco and California. Um, this is the third IGF conference I've attended, and it seems that every conference that we ha I've attended, the issue of um, ability of the other de underdeveloped countries to, to have the internet is in question. Um, and we're talking about the wealthiest world, uh, built trillions of dollars being spent on war, and yet we can't have electricity in Africa and other countries. So we have a real problem uh, of resources and priority of the resources. The resources are going to wars, they're going to other things, they're not going for the development of infrastructure in other countries that need it to develop the internet. And I see that as absolutely critical, and I, I, to have to come back to another conference and hear the same thing is uh, problematic. Uh, the second aspect, I think, and this has not really been dealt with in, in my concern, and that is automation technology robotization uh, of the working class. And this is having a massive effect in the United States and other countries. Millions of people are losing their jobs. Uh, and the gig economy threatens uh, the future of stability for working people, uh, not just in the underdeveloped world, but in the advanced countries in the United States, particularly. And I think that this has to be addressed. What is going to happen to the working class, the mass of people, with uh, these technologies, AI, uh, their future? And it has to be a, it's a world issue, but it's also an issue for the developing countries, uh, which has to be addressed, I think, at the next conference. Lastly, uh, we have uh, in San Francisco, people talk about California. Uh, it's like dystopia right now with these wildfires that are taking place uh, in, in California. Uh, climate is having a radical effect, and this has to be addressed because you cannot uh, build this world in a vacuum. And, the, and the, what is going on now in California, mass fires breaking out, threatens not just California, the whole world. And this is another issue that needs an international action uh, to address uh, the environment. And I think that that is connected very much because uh, those people in Silicon Valley and those people who think that they can go on uh, independently of what is going on globally are mistaken. Uh, they're living in a, a false world, and I think that has to be confronted uh, because when I go back to California, I may have to think about getting a mask, you know, f for my breathing, which I thought was only in some places like Beijing or others, but right now in California. So this has to be addressed as well. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you have the floor. Thank you. My name is Walter Natris. I'm from the Netherlands and representing the technical community here. In the past year and the past conference, we've heard a lot about potential changes that the IGF could go through. And we have been working on a program called Strengthen Cooperation within the context of the IGF. There is a second iteration published recently. And I would like to take out a few highlights and give two examples where things could go better. We are advancing pilots or advising pilots on intercessional work to go to work differently than happens now, but also to have more proactive sessions where people actually work together towards some sort of an outcome or solution or best practices, whatever we would like to call them. Another thing that we've noticed by working this way is that how hard it is to come to decisions within the traditional IGF process. And we have been trying to find online and offline processes that could actually help in decision making, and that is something we asked the MAG to series look into. Um, the third one is MAG leadership. What the gentleman just said there, there are so overarching topics that may just not come up through the regular bottom-up process. So if the MAG could be in an open, transparent way, bring in topics 
from a larger community point of view, perhaps these very, very big topics could find a place in the IGF as well. And I would like to give three examples on the basis of what we've just been through the past three days where things could go better. And don't take this personal, they're just examples. I've, this is my ninth IGF in 10 years. So if I go to a session on child abuse on the internet, I know after nine years how bad it is. So if I have to go through one and a half hour hearing that all again without any solutions or potential ways forward coming out of a session, that something is being done wrong. So again, MAG leadership, what could you actually help to bring this topic further and assist towards solutions? The other one is on coordination. That is something which comes with this. If there are 10 topics on cybersecurity, why not bring the most brilliant minds together and ask what would be the way forward instead of hearing the same story in 10 sessions? And finally, let me come to tangible, return to tangible outcomes. If we could organize working sessions like that or proactive sessions, whatever we call them, then there will be some tangible outcomes without negotiation because we could have two solutions which are not the same, but the least gives a direction that we can work on. And I hope seriously that the MAG is taking this Strength and Cooperation report seriously, and we'll see what we can do in 2019. Thank you very much. Thank you, Walt. Ernesto Rodriguez, in nome of the... Ernesto Rodriguez, on behalf of the delegation of Cuba, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to work to discuss and to continue to make progress on such important s subjects as this one, which affect the life and the development of our peoples. ITCs are increasingly decisive in the life of the citizens of the world. Enhancing security and trust in the ITCs are uh, elements which, along with the respect for ethics and promotion of innovation, as well as the development of the internet are fundamental. I would like once again like to thank the IGF for making uh, the debate on these subjects possible. We have to work to develop a democratic and participatory governance based on the charter of the UN, international law and multilateralism, with the participation of all stakeholders according to their respective roles and responsibilities. Telecommunications and uh, the ICTs cannot uh, afford to ignore individuals and in their development. It's up to all, the governments, uh, the private sector, uh, the universities and civil society, to avoid the Internet being used for subversive criminal or subversive ends. And, and thus, we have to fight the proliferation of cyber crime and cyber terrorism. I therefore encourage the Secretariat of the IGF to continue to study those subjects in uh, the coming sessions. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for reminding us as well that, in fact, this session is interpreted in the six UN languages. So please do, do feel free to stand up and, and speak in your own language. Renata? Hi, uh, I am Renata Quino Ribeiro. I'm a third term MAG member, so now I am community. <laughs> so <laughs> I get to come here, however, to thank Undesa and uh, Lynn for the early appointment of new MAG members and uh, the opportunity to get to know some of them and in a dialogue with uh, Secretary Liu. And I think that we get to know them uh, more as they, their names are already online. There will be press release and on. I wish all the best for the civil society new MAG members, Carlos Afonso uh, from Brazil, who was from CGIBR, and uh, Maria Paz Canales from the Direitos Digitales. Uh, they are great. And uh, on the language efforts, I think we need still to remember that the IGF is a project that belongs to all of us because some rooms, for example, just allowing the IGF lack space, the Caribbeans were feeling left out. So take a look. If you see translators in the booth, there will be translation. If you don't, find a way to include people. And that also works for remote participation. I have a friend who is pregnant at home trying to watch every session and 
as she tries to uh, collaborate and sometimes the speaker's cue is not reminded and there, there needs to be uh, conscious efforts of all of us for that. And finally, I'd like to thank all the Secretariat and the newcomers for the collaboration on the Knowledge Cafe Space, the newcomers track, which Lynn opened up. And just today, a former MAG member, Mike Nelson, came to ask about the, his report. So that was really nice to see. Um, and uh, we need that space. We need the space to decompress as well. I hope this keeps happening on the next IGFs. Thank you very much. Thank you, Renata. Uh, my name is Farza Nebadi from Internet Governance Project at Georgia Tech. First, I say the positive things. Thank you very much. This was, uh, and I thank the French uh, government for hosting this event. Uh, this has been very organized and very well done. Uh, but now, um, so I'm going to read my statement. I think internet governance was kind of lost at this meeting. Attending sessions after sessions, rarely did I come across sessions that were about internet governance issues that this community is supposed to address and can actually address in other venues. We cannot address local issues. We cannot address country level issues. We are here to keep the internet global, accessible, open, and free. I don't want to define the mandate of Internet Governance Forum. I just want to remind us why we are here. And we need to talk about what affects these values. I suggest to the multi-stakeholder advisory group to listen to its community, to represent us in its decision-making on how to shape the agenda and set up an agenda that is representative of us. Let's not forget why we are here. Youth, gender, artificial intelligence, blockchain are, are very important issues. As long as they affect internet governance, that's how we can help. We are here to talk, about, to, talk to government, civil society, private sector, technical communities, and others whom we do not get to interact with. We are here to talk to key players, decision makers. Doesn't mean that they're like in the multi-stakeholder environment, all the stakeholder groups are decision makers in a way. So we are here to talk to them, but sometimes I just feel like we are, oh, I'm done. So I'm just, I just feel like we are not talking to the decision makers and people that actually make decisions or we are not bringing the issues at the table to talk to the community. Thank you. Thank you. Let me just check for a moment to see, do we have two people in the queue remotely? It says hand down, but they're there. So why don't we put them sort of a third queue as we rotate through. Um, Anya, do you need time to set them up and bring them in or? Just a second, sir. We're All those beeps are promising, but if, if, we need, <laughs> if we need a few more seconds, we can go to the next speaker and come back because you, okay, yes, sir. Thank you. My name is Rajendra Pratap Gupta. I'm from India. Namaste. I think uh, I should first congratulate United Nations for IGF and the government of France for organizing a hassle-free seamless conference for people like me who've come thousands of miles away. I think this has been a great learning. I have always believed that this is the most exciting time in the history of human race. And in the last three days, I'm convinced that technology is a great enabler. So on one side, there is a great opportunity with technology, but also at the same time, I think automation and technology proliferation creates a scare of loss of jobs. So while IGF like body, I think when you host the next year in Germany, you would see that technology not only addresses proliferation of technology, productivity, and profits, but also people come at the core. And with this, I hope that if you are making notes for what next, I think uh, 
I would expect a roadmap of how do we create jobs using technology with more specific details about sectoral jobs that we create because of a country like India, which has 1.3 billion population. And I think that there's a prediction of 69% of jobs under threat due to automation. I get concerned of time. So at the same time, I remain optimistic with the kind of things that I see happening. And I hope that you will address that. And also lastly, I think India should be ready to host IGF in the near future. Thank you so much. Thank you. Let me just check with Anya in the online queue. If you want, Anya, we can just, uh, are you ready now? No, okay. I'll wait for you to just signal if you just wave your hand and then we'll, we'll put them in with everybody's support. You have the queue, uh, sorry, you have the floor. Bonjour. Good afternoon, my name is Florence Nolansky. I'm a militant for uh, uh, Internet Without Borders, an NGO based in Brazil. I would like to speak uh, to what uh, President Macron said in the opening session. That uh, raised a lot of interest, a lot of debates here. I think that it was a very rich and intense uh, speech, which uh, proposed a very complete agenda. So therefore, we can see the attention paid by uh, uh, president to this subject. But as a uh, representative of civil society, I have some additional remarks to make. It's important to draw our attention to the importance of regulation by the democratic powers. As he said, the Internet cannot be a, a lawless territory or, or one controlled by unelected powers. It's important for all of public opinion to uh, to uh, become involved in the internet, but there's a danger. So it, there would be a danger if we considered that the internet was the, the only vehicle responsible for hate speech and radicalization. We know that the internet can also be an arena in which other things outside of the internet can be expressed. For example, if we see the rise of uh, of anti-democratic forces, forces that are against human rights, fascistic, nationalistic. We can see that this is a much more global process, uh, which Internet is only a part of. And it's a series of, uh, it's the result of a whole series of economic phenomena which have led to uh, greater precarity in our society. So therefore, the Internet is not the only culprit, or it should not be singled out as the only culprit. And it should not be the only uh, elements subject to regulation. If we share these democratic values, well, when President Macron said, yes, it's our values that must be defended and our ideas, I think that there's a certain very dangerous bias in that sort of discourse. When we speak about neutrality, we need to recall that uh, neutrality has to do with the data and, and not the content. I think we have to keep that in mind. And finally, uh, let me uh, redress the uh, Paris uh, appeal on internet safety and trust. I think that cooperation between states is most welcome, but it is, uh, it is alarming to s think that regulation and the security of data can be discussed without discussing surveillance practiced by states or the need to protect anonymity and uh, cryptography. I think that uh, it's unthinkable to protect cyberspace without uh, discussing these issues as well. Thank you. Thank you. Sala? Thank you, Lynn. Sala Nieta Tamaniko, I'm a, for the rec a record, uh, outgoing MEG member, but speaking in her individual capacity. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the French government for being excellent hosts, and also to Yundessa, the IGF Secretariat, the MEG Chair. Uh, for the privilege to serve. Uh, I was just listening to some of the comments from the floor and I thought I should uh, invite the global community, like those especially who want to input into thematic sessions, to input in the first MAG meeting, which will happen next year, and be on the lookout for the, for the link because there's always a live stream, I mean remote participation so you can give your views right from the beginning of the year. That's the first thing. Second thing I'd like to say is, uh, since we're taking stock and um, moderated two sessions this week, which we, well, the first one was media content, second one being uh, cybersecurity, one of the interesting things we saw as we took 
uh, as we were taking stock, particularly in the context of the internet we trust as a, as a general theme, is that we, what we're witnessing in the, the world today is there are threats to that trust. And uh, if I were to summarize the threats, it would be a fear, in one is the first one being fear, the second one being the love of money, and the third one being, um, uh, for the life of me, I can't remember right now, but that doesn't matter. And so what we, what we essentially are seeing are two extreme ends, which has been described as a Californian versus a China model. But from where I'm sitting, both do surveillance. Uh, one does it overtly, one does it covertly. So the thing is, one of the things that I would like the global community to consider is having a common set of values. Because yes, we may differ in terms of, in terms of governance systems, but to look into global norms and, and values that we can subscribe to, to make um, collaboration much more feasible and seamless. So with that, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Salah. And I think we now have the online participant. Maybe you can use the hand mic there, Anya. For some reason, those two mics aren't working, even though they light up. Thank you. Sorry for taking time. So reading the comment from Mr. Manohar Valpuri. The Secretary General renewed the 2018, uh, 2019 Internet Governance Forum Multi-Stakeholder Advisory Group today. Its 52 members will advise on developing the program of the 14th Internet Governance Forum to be hosted by the government of Germany in 2019. What measures are discussed to ensure participation online, leveraging the power of internet more effectively, similar to participation on site in the future IGFs and several UN conferences? Thank you. Th thank you. Uh, online participation is extremely important to us and, and I think we made um, fairly significant strides the last few years, but we certainly have more to do. I don't know if there's anything specific you'd like to add, that was a pretty concrete comment. Uh, yes, that's very true. And our next year's hosts know the importance of it and we are making plans to make sure that it can operate as smoothly as possible. Yeah. Thank you, you have the floor. Um, hi, I'm from the Network Rights Coalition in Brazil and I'd like to read an open letter in defense of the internet in Brazil we wrote. On the occasion of the Internet Governance Forum of 2018, held on November 12, 12th to 14th in Paris, the Network Rights Coalition wishes to declare its position regarding the risks that internet policies in Brazil may confront with the perspective of the Bolsonaro government. Brazil has made sig significant progress in recent years in the fields of freedom ex of expression, access to information and democratic management of communications through multi-stakeholder internet governance, which must be ensured in the face of emerging threats. The Internet Civil Rights Framework and the General Law on Data Protection and Policies for Expanding Access and Connectivity are references to these ach achievements. They have given in Brazil a prominent position and in international recognition regarding cooperation between public sector, business, academia and civil society for multi-stakeholder governance, which has been determinant for the development, development of the Internet in the country balancing the demands of different groups of society. The civil rights framework was the fruit, fruit of this pluralist cooperation, establishing internationally agreed principles, guarantees, rights and duties, and, and it's now a reference to the world. Another effort that also involved a positive articulation between these various sectors was the approval of the general law of protection of personal data, in line with the European GDPR, in order to guarantee privacy and access policies providing legal security for economic development and new technologies. The law also provides the necessary conditions for the construction of public policies based on the pro processing of data by the state in order, in order to avoid the massive and ar arbitrary surveillance of the public powers on citizens. In this sense, it, it is reprehensible that a national authority for the protection of personal data, 
whose role is fundamental to the effect effectiveness of the new law, was vetoed by the current presented president of the Republic. In addition, there is the risk announced by the elected government that the regulation and oversight of the explo exploitation of personal data in Brazil will be submitted to a military body such as the Brazilian Inter Intelligence Agency, which compromises democratic freedoms. The current moment also requires special attention to ensure the security of communications and individual and collective freedoms. With, with the democratic participation of the various sectors, in order to enable, enable their, their social control, in order to enable their, their social control, privacy is cent central to this, and, con and concrete measures must be taken to pr protect the data stored in the public and private spheres by the adoption and promotion of secure, secure technologies and the defense of cri cryptography. It is essential, lastly, to strengthen the, the institutions that have worked with these policies, guaranteeing the advances mentioned above and the democratic constructions of Internet policies, especially the Internet Steering Committee in Brazil, the National Education and Research Network, and universities and public research centers that contribute to, de to the development and sovereignty of infrastructure and the Internet in Brazil. In this sense, the Network Rights Coalition denounces the seriousness of the practices adopted in electoral propaganda that involve internet pro platforms which dominate the social networking ma market. WhatsApp, for, ex for example, served political interest, interests that influenced the election scenario with serious violations of the electoral law. For all these reasons, the members of the member organizations of the Network Rights Coalition seek with this, with this letter to mobilize international solidarity around the defense of digital rights in Brazil. There is no room in internet governance for anti-democratic measures. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to ask everybody to do their very best to keep to the time so that we can ensure we have uh, time for all the comments. Thank you. Hi, my name is Susanya Herring. Uh, I'm an executive committee member of the Southeastern European Dialogue on Internet Governance and the coordinator of Youth IGF Turkey. But right now I'm speaking as the lead of the working group on youth participation in, in Internet Governance Forum 2018. Uh, we started this group as part of the YCIG, which is the official dynamic coalition on youth uh, of the IGF. And we started to identify youth interest workshops and try to bring them together with youth experts that would be in person, uh, present here in Paris. And we reached out to approximately 10 workshops. Uh, sadly, only two or three of them replied. Uh, some of them replied only by saying, you are welcome to attend from the floor, which I'd like to put on record that uh, as the IGF format, we don't need, no one needs an invitation to attend from the floor. So we saw that as a very disappointing non-answer. And I'd, me and the other members of the working group who uh, put time and effort in this uh, work would like to say that let's please stop tokenizing youth and uh, talking about them as if they're not in the room. And when I say youth, please don't think about young people who are like doughy-eyed and attending and don't know things about anything because there are impressive entrepreneurs who are young people, there are impressive activists who are young people, there are uh, budding government officials who are young people. So although what we, our coalition is called youth, uh, maybe we need to step outside that definition and stop seeing youth as just youth but just members of a stakeholder group who just happen to be young. Uh, in that sense, I hope this changes next year. And one last thing, going over time, just 10 or 20 seconds. Um, there were some other workshops who uh, are named Youth IGF Movement who did not communicate any organizing plans uh, with either the YCIG or IGF recognized um, Youth IGF forums that are publicly available on the website, and these siloed uh, efforts about what youth can do or should do is frankly uh, disappointing, and I think it wastes time on all efforts because 
as everyone has said, together, when we do things together, it just makes more sense instead of repeating the same efforts in closed groups. So thank you. Thank you. Excellent points and clearly some things we can take note of next year. Uh, you have the floor. Bonjour, je, je suis Betty Fosta, en fait. Betty Fosta, I come from the digital community of uh, Guadeloupe in the Caribbean. I would like to thank the organizing committee from France and the IGF for allowing me to participate for the first time, as well as the International Organization of Francophony that really worked with the Francophone community to, to, to get the information around. I would like to share with you something that I said uh, uh, to Renata. First of all, as a Caribbean, I wanted to attend the LAC meeting today. I was my neighbor from the left. We speak French together, Creole and English, but it was, in fact, in Spanish that he spoke. Uh, there was, and I don't speak Spanish, so there's no way I could attend that meeting. There's no way I could attend that Latin American meeting. So therefore, there should be at least be some documentation in another language. It's a matter of respect to the other communities. Secondly, last night I wanted to see how the multi-partner movement for cybersecurity in Africa was organized. I attended that meeting. The organizers were uh, all were focused on a very North American type of model for Africa. I think that's really unfortunate. I took the floor and I said, how can you consider cybersecurity in Africa the way you do when most of the weaknesses are cultural elements? Half of Africa speaks French, uh, so half of Africa has another way of thinking, and you want to force a single model on them, and at the same time speaking speak about multi-partner multi -partner approach, that's impossible. We have to change that. There has to be, uh, I mean, there's a sort of Anglophone way of thinking, but we have to work on consultation in order to make sure that this is really a multi-partner uh, model. We can't use the word global if only one community is, um, is um, the focus. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Anya? Or a remote participant or online participant? Hello, my name is Lawrence. I don't know if I'm on. You are, yes. Oh, great, thank you. Um, my name is Lawrence. I'm speaking from the remote hub in Abuja, Nigeria. I want to thank um, IDF for giving us this opportunity. Uh, to follow what's happening in Paris. Um, first of all, I would like to thank uh, the team for uh, all the efforts that was put into ensuring that we could have some form of connection uh, while the meeting was off on Monday. Uh, we were able to follow uh, different sessions by directly connecting to the WebEx uh, and uh, from YouTube. Uh, if these uh, models or if these uh, tracks were not available would have completely be blocked out. Um, I'm sure it took a lot of effort. I want to thank uh, the tech team for, for doing this. Um, I also want to thank Derek again for giving us an opportunity um, to be able to uh, have this hub live in Abuja. Um, earlier today, um, the hub was following sessions in one of the room. We recognized that the last speaker was one of the participants. Uh, in that particular session, and it was difficult for us to uh, follow what was going on because the language was not in English. Um, I know that we have headsets and translations in uh, different rooms, but out here, uh, aside from this remote hub, I'm sure they, I don't have the statistics, but I'm sure that there will be so many uh, participants following remotely. Uh, it will do us a lot of good if we standardize communication such that uh, we won't have to strain our eyes trying to get what people are saying from the, uh, uh, from the translations that we see on the screen. Thanks again for this um, opportunity to intervene. 
Thank you, and thank you to everyone participating in the remote hub there as well. Sir, you have the floor. Bonjour, mes amis. Hello, my name is Evgeny from the Russian Federation, taking, uh, representing the technical community. We're working with the Minister of Internet Issues. And the Internet has already grown from a specialized uh, network of military members and students. And now it is really a, a, the epitome, a nutshell of our world, essentially, showing all of its diversity. And unfortunately, we cannot allow it to simply govern itself. We believe that, as it is in our real life as well, we have our national regulations, we have international legal instruments, uh, as is the case in virtual reality. We should ensure that we can internationally regulate the Internet. And here, in the beginning of this forum, the President of France says that we have a dichotomy between the California and the China system of Internet governance. But we need to develop a balanced model for Internet governance. Now, when it comes to this issue, Internet governance, that is, Russia believes that there is a leading role to be played by governments and international organizations such as UNESCO, as well as uh, ITU. And we think that governments have sovereign rights and responsibilities to protect the data of their citizens. And we have to decide on how this data will be processed and how it should be uh, taken into account. But we believe that we need, indeed, to have a balanced approach. We should not go toward either of the two extremes. And at this forum, I've seen the data. There are about 100 countries that presented more than 3,000 participants. And all of the issues, the concerns of our societies have been expressed. We hope that we'll be able to achieve a certain consensus, come to a certain agreement. Russia supports creating a system to govern the Internet and to increase trust in the Internet. We would like to see a transparent model of governance, an international model as well. <coughs> and we also believe that there should be a united international mechanism for Internet governance. And the rules for this mechanism would be established by and agreed upon by all of the members. Again, thank you to the organizers, the rapporteurs, and all participants for their diverse po points of view. It's very useful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Derek, you have the floor. Good afternoon. Uh, this is Derek O'Halloran from the World Economic Forum. Um, I'd like to start off by thanking uh, all of the organizers and hosts and congratulating you all on an excellent uh, installment of the Internet Governance Forum. Um, as well as all of the, the volunteers. Also recognize all the members of the community that have helped, uh, uh, have collaborated on um, key topics during the course of the year, such as internet access and inclusion, um, the Dynamic Coalition, Internet of Things, and so on. Um, on a slightly different topic, a couple of weeks ago, I read the, uh, the report, the most recent report from IPCC uh, on climate change. And I almost felt like everybody should just stop what they're doing and we should all go work on that. Um, but upon reflection, it kind of struck uh, me as a reminder of the importance of the work that we all do. Um, our ability to achieve the goals that we have set ourselves around climate change and, in fact, any of the sustainable development goals is massively enhanced by the Internet and related digital technologies. But if the problems that technology, Internet-related technologies create are more than the problems they solve, well, then none of that will happen. And so I, I introduce this because, yes, technology can help with lots of shared goals, but we also need shared goals for what we're trying to achieve with the Internet. And in this context, and in the context of a number of discussions about the evolution of the Internet Governance Forum, I'd like to express the full support from the World Economic Forum for the idea of strengthening the, the Internet Governance Forum. And also highlight that as a multi-stakeholder mission-oriented organization uh, ourselves, 
but of a, with a network that is highly different and potentially highly complementary to the, to the multi-stakeholder network that IGF represents. I would encourage the community as well as the MAG to, to think about how we may leverage the relative strengths of both of these communities in 2019 and beyond. Thank you. Thank you, Derek. Um, do we have another online participant ready? Anya? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Hello? We can hear you. Please uh, go ahead. Uh, I'm uh, Amir Mokabdari, uh, PhD in Media and Internet Governance in Tehran University. Uh, I would like to <clears throat> uh, uh, add my comments here and thank IGF for this uh, well-organized uh, meeting. Uh, we all have common dream, digital dream, new, fair, democracy, transparent, multilateral, rule-based, ethical, and universal internal governance model within UN framework. We all against Nature's school internet governance and digital and digital unilateralism and nationalistic policy are greatest enemy of the digital peaceful coexistence. I hope one day in near future this common dream may come to true. If every one of us feels that he is internet governor. Only we should find our role and responsibility in digital age. Thank you. I think that was the end, but I want to make sure. I see they've gone out of the queue. So, Nigel, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Uh, your Excellencies, Ministers, Ladies and Gentlemen, Madam Chair, two years ago at the IGF, I talked about how the young can inspire us, how the young can inspire democracy, how the young are needed for this internet governance paradigm of ours. Perhaps it was an address that wasn't needed. Perhaps it was an address out of its time. But clearly the young and the youth as we saw and whatever characteristic we apply to them, as we saw from our colleagues from Brazil, from Turkey, from Mexico, from many other constituencies here in the last few days, the youth are leading the way. Whether we say the youth, whether we call them a stakeholder group, this is the future of the internet. So there's no need for me to speak about the youth today. Last year in Geneva, where I currently live, we talked about the IGF. We talked about the future of the IGF. We talked about fighting to save the IGF. We were concerned about the future and stability of the IGF. We were concerned that not enough stakeholders were here in the room to really make the IGF this multi-stakeholder marvelous forum it is. Why were we worried? Look what we've had in the last couple of days. Thanks to Paris, thanks to France, Thanks to the president, and I was almost going to speak in French, but I won't, uh, <laughs> I won't risk it. This has been an inspirational IGF. France has put the IGF back on the map. Paris has inspired us. But, Madam Chair, we have other things to worry about. As we heard in President Macron's speech, there are many issues to do with the internet that we have to confront today. And it is not, I don't think, characterized into three stakeholder groups, perhaps. Perhaps there are different groups. Perhaps there's a China constituency, a California constituency. But let's not talk about that. Let's talk about the principles and the values that underpin this internet that we want. 
that we want an open internet, that we want a single internet, that we want a free internet that everyone can join in, that everyone can inspire innovation and education and passion about, that everyone can do something to contribute to society, that people can connect to it. And Madam Chair, if we want that, what better place to discuss it? What better place to discuss regulations? Not in one stakeholder setting, not with one group of stakeholders, but at this marvellous IGF where so many people come together to chart the future of this asset that we must all cherish. Thank you. Thank you, Nigel. And I'm already looking forward to next year's remarks as well. <laughs> you have the floor, sir. Thank you, Chairperson. My name is Khalid Ibrahim. I am the director of the Gulf Center for Human Rights. I am speaking here on behalf of civil society organizations in MENA. Uh, I would like to start by thanking volunteers and all the people who are involved here in France in organizing this IGF. And really, this is my uh, third IGF. This is my third IGF, and again, I witness uh, the weak uh, representation of the MENA region. Uh, I noticed that there are about 22 workshops or sessions on digital security or cybersecurity. It is an important topic, but not to this level, 22 sessions. Here in MENA, we have a lot of chronic problems, the lack of network neutrality, uh, accessibility, and problems related to uh, freedom of expression on the net. Uh, because of the cyber crimes law, we have some of our colleagues, they are in prison because of a post on Facebook or because of a tweet on a Twitter. And I believe strongly that human rights should be in the very heart of the IGF, any IGF. I talked about this last year, and I'm talking this year about it, and I hope that the MAC members will address this uh, weak representation of the MENA region. Today we uh, got a meeting with some participants from the MENA region and we agreed to do something about it. You know, there are many solutions, including a sub-forum for MENA in the next uh, uh, IGF, and there are some other uh, measures that could be taken, but I hope this time the MAC members will look uh, closely at the problems that we have in MENA region. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Increasing participation from the MENA region, as in many of the other regions, is extremely important to the MAG. And we did have a working group on comms and outreach, which attempts to do some of that, but we really require the community to step up and help with outreach to each and every day in all of our own activities. So thank you. Um, Anya, is there somebody online? And then, again, we'll keep going through third queue. Anya? Want to come back in a minute? Okay. Well, I mean, just so we're, we're doing a sort of round the robin here. So, okay, so we'll go to the next queue. Bonjour, je suis maman de l'eau, membre du comité prep. I'm a member of the floor, and I'm going to be speaking as a Senegalese member of private society. I would just like to commend the effort made by the Secretariat of the IGF here today with regard to content blocking and this is an excellent initiative that can help us help everyone and would encourage us to move toward creating direct content in other languages uh, without having to go through translations this also would help us when it comes to cultural exchange and communication all of us, I think we should support this project. I'd also like to mention the important topic of multilingualism and multilateralism, which maintains diversity and inclusion. 
We cannot have one government for the entire world with that. We have to include everyone through including all languages. Thank you. Thank you, Mamadou. You have the floor. Hi, everyone. This is Jenna. I am Youth Ambassador from NatMission.Asia and one of the organizers of the Youth IGF in Asia Pacific region. This is my first time here attending IGF and in the past three days, I have been trying my best to attend as many workshops related to youth as possible. And after attending the workshops and as a youth ambassador from Asia Pacific regions, I realized that it is essential to bring issues that Asia Pacific regions are facing to IGF, especially from the youth perspective because Asia Pacific is diverse regions that include people from different cultural backgrounds, language, and level of development. And I hope in the future, more youth from different regions and diverse backgrounds will be invited to different workshops to advocate for the community in IGF. And we will have more interactive conversations among youth in the workshop, which the setting of the dialogue may allow us to exchange more on our experiences and opinion at a deeper level and eventually might help in eliminating digital divide and facilitating higher level of inclusions in the context of rapid development and advancement of the internet. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to the last two speakers for, for keeping to the time as well. Um, I'm going to have to close the queue in a moment if we're to end this part of the session on time and I look at the folks that are there. So if there's something you really want to say, um, you should please get in the queue. Otherwise, it will close with the, the individuals that are standing there now. Miguel, you have the floor. Gracias, Lynn, por darme la palabra. Thank you for giving me the floor. I'd like to thank the government of France for an organizing such a high quality IGF, making it possible for us to face 2019 with a lot of hope. I'd like to thank the Secretariat and the Chair for the work accomplished along with uh, the MAG. I would like, first of all, to thank all the participants because this uh, multi stakeholder forum wouldn't be possible without the participation of each of us of each of us who came from our different places. So that participation for us is a very uh, strong source of encouragement. My name is Miguel Candy, uh, a member of the uh, MAG for Paraguay. I had forgotten to introduce myself. I would also like to add a point. When we speak of the IGF this year, it's very important to point out that the subjects we discussed this year uh, are a bridge to next year's IGF, and they also constitute a mandate for the MAG. Uh, as to how they should pursue the foreign relations of the IGF, and the IGF with other United Nations uh, bodies. The IGF, after all, is unique in this UN system. Therefore, its relations with, with, with other fora, including the high-level panel on digital cooperation, uh, I have to take account of the mandate given them and always take uh, account of the uh, developing countries, especially the small island developing states and states without a coastline. Thank you. Sir, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for organizing this. It's always a wonderful opportunity to meet colleagues and friends. Um, and we always think of the people who could not be here, uh, of course. Um, so issues of access are very important and they're amply discussed and I'm grateful for that. Um, I'm thinking of it a little more personally because today is, um, today happens to be the birthday of a dear friend of mine, Wa'il El Abbas, who is spending it in jail in Egypt. Um, Wael is probably the godfather of the blogging community in Egypt, and uh, he's unable to be here, even though he is one of the people whom we celebrate. He's one of many people around the world, really, who are part of our community and whose presence and whose voices we, li we love to hear and applaud. But uh, oftentimes, unfortunately, be they in Vietnam, in Rwanda, in Egypt, in Palestine, um, when they get in trouble, we, we tend to forget them. So I am. Um, allowing myself to remind you all to think of, of all people like Wa'il Abbas, like Ala Abdel Fattah, like many others, 
who are part of our community and who cannot join us uh, because uh, they live in autocratic regimes. Um, and I urge you to remember the names and to think of it as, as individuals and not as mere numbers. So thank you for your time, thank you for, uh, for organizing this, and thank you for having us. Thank you. Anya, are we ready with the online? Go to the next Hola. and then. Hola. Voy a leer el comentario. I'm going to read the comments from Alfred uh, Velasco, representing uh, digital users of Ecuador. We want internet for all, all the time. A free internet, a safe internet, an open internet, and a neutral one. To that end, these uh, spaces must uh, improve, they must ensure greater participation for all, they must give room to all. Governments continue to be uh, the ones most absent, both in the global fora as well as in the national fora uh, and in, in the NRIs. And those are the ones, the governments are the ones who are being called on to uh, speak even more about the elephant in the room, about uh, uh, security, which should not run counter to the enjoyment of rights. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, you have the floor. Hi, everyone. My name is Amin Hussainov. I'm from Azerbaijan. I'm a human rights activist in exile base now, unfortunately. Since from 2012, where Azerbaijan hosted IGF, we are intensively attended and joined, and we believe to this idea for IGF make important role to promote internet freedoms, and especially we believe for if it's happening in Azerbaijan, it's some kind of chance to develop internet freedoms in our own state. Unfortunately, uh, six years later, uh, all internet freedoms completely downgraded. And today I'm speaking here on behalf of the voices which is can't speak anymore for the blockers which is killed in the prison. My colleague, like uh, Mehman Galandarov, I just tried to show his, he killed in the prison in 2017 in April and the government says well, he makes suicide by himself. And 45 days this person stayed without access to the lawyer. I'm speaking on behalf of another a uh, friend of mine, Mehman Hussainov, which is my brother and chairman of our organization, Institute for Reported Freedom and Safety. He's exposed high-level corruptions, and since 2012, he's attended also closely to IGF as like civil society representative in Azerbaijan. And today this person jailed for defamation charges, and he can't speak. He's even not able, since from 2012 until He's arrested in March 2017, five years. He's staying on the, like hostages in his own state. And today, these people need your solidarity. And if any of you, which is, I saw many friends here, if you want to join to our campaign for solidarity, because Mehman's birthday coming soon at 24th November, please, as like our friends, Rebecca McKenna and Christophe Delois from RSF joined to campaign. We are invited you to also support Mehman. And finally, I just tell you the reason why Mehman is in the prison. He is arrested because he exposed corruption and nepotism in my country and person which has put his to the jail according to her political will. This is First Lady of Azerbaijan, which is also goodwill ambassador of UNESCO. And we call to UNESCO stop her uh, goodwill ambassador mandate and don't give floor to authoritarian leaders to using this kind of important international units to promote and legitimize his autocratic regimes. Thank you very much for attention. Sir. Thank you. Sir, you have the floor. Bonsoir, Madame la Présidente. Je m'appelle Kossi My name is Kossi Amin from Benin and the Vice President of the IGF Benin. I have two proposals. The first one concerns the number of uh, parallel workshops. I think that we could reduce the number of parallel workshops and have workshops that last more than 90 minutes. 
in order to allow f for much more interaction, in order to give the opportunity f for the moderators of the sessions to take two, or f two to five minutes at the end of the session in order to summarize the uh, main uh, results of the uh, session. My second proposal concerns governance. We're increasingly challenging the very word governance in uh, the very concept of the word governance in the name of the IGF. Now, those who uh, use the word governance aren't all that wrong. There are even uh, problems uh, interpreting that word in certain languages. And when we come to the IGF, we can see that the subjects that we discuss refer much more to the concept of appropriation than to that of governance. Therefore, I think it would be advisable for us to replace if the United Nations can agree, uh, the term, uh, the Internet Governance, uh, Governance Forum by the Internet Appropriation Forum. Thank you. Thank you, Kosi. I'm going to have to close the queues now at the folks that are standing up in line to make sure we have time to go on to the community um, speakers as well. Of course, there's always a possibility to give your feedback online or um, catch us individually. <coughs> But let's continue going through the queue. So, Timea, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Lynn. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Timea Schütte. Um, I'm a MAG member from the private sector, just stepping into my second term. So, thank you for that. Um, and thank you for UNESCO um, and to France for, uh, for hosting the IGF uh, in Paris this year. We're really glad to be here. Um, I wanted to um, share with you three very short messages. Um, that stemmed from our workshop that ICC Basis organized um, yesterday uh, on the theme of artificial intelligence and um, the possibility uh, for it to enhance the connectivity opportunities for those living with disabilities in the world. Um, and we came away with three messages from the workshop um, to see what can be done um, to use emerging technologies to reap these possibilities um, for, for these people. And the workshop said that AI um, needs um, sharing of information and raising of awareness um, to enrich people's lives. Uh, we need public-private partnerships to ensure diffusion of technology, and we need holistic policy frameworks to support cross-cutting technical, social, cultural, economic, and governance issues. So I say we had this workshop on the promise of emerging technology for uh, people with disabilities, but if we asked just as the same, why are we coming to the IGF? What uh, are we doing here? What are we looking for from the IGF? I'm sure we would have gotten the same answers. We're coming here to share information and to hear information from our counterparts. We're here to build partnerships and we're here to find the right policy elements that can help us uh, to reach the opportunities that technology has for the shared development goals that we have. So I'm looking forward. Um, to my next year on the MAG, I'm looking forward to the next IGF and the many more that will come afterwards. I'm looking forward to strengthening this multi-stakeholder model with my colleagues on the MAG and with you all who are participating in the IGF. See you in Berlin, I hope. Thank you, Tamea. I'm going to go to the next mic in a moment, but Anya, could you, I said it when I caught the queue and I said those people standing in line, obviously I also meant anybody that was in queue online as well, so if there's somebody that wants to come back in, they should because there was a, an online participant. And, um, sir, you have the floor. Thank you very much. I am Ali So from the Gambia, working in the civil society. Like I was in Mexico like 2016, then Gambia just had an election where we experienced internet shutdown. So some of the things that we suggested during that forum is how can the UNIGF involve stakeholders like the governments? Because most of the time when you come here, it's only mostly the host country's government representative at certain level that you find here. For instance, everyone is excited about Macron's speech and all those other things. I believe Africa should be represented more, especially at head of state level and ministers, because most of these countries, the internet related laws are almost non-existing. Governments have to use laws relating to that in prosecuting certain crimes. Like for instance, in our country, we have a lot of issues when it comes to those things. Even though it's a young government with high promises and hopes that things will change. And another thing also is when it comes to the investment aspect of things. From where I come from, like the Gambia, 
internet data is very expensive and connectivity is an issue in many of the communities. And we're talking about an open internet and internet, affordable internet for all. So I believe we need to get more investors involved, maybe through the UN offices in those member countries in getting some of these things available for the population. And I believe the IGF should continue to push for most of these things because it's the only platform, like the general platform, that people can come and voice these concerns, even though we have regional IGF country level and other issues. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Sir, you have the floor. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Samalose Mensah uh, from Ghana, and I'm CEO of NetBuzz Africa. Um, I want to first thank um, the organizers for this opportunity. Uh, it's my first as a youth uh, IGF. The many sessions I attended uh, this year, um, they tackled a lot of the sessions that I actually wanted to listen to. But however, my focus on digital inclusion and jobs for the youth uh, still remains a problem that I didn't really get to understand what uh, everyone was talking about. Um, I believe in our quest to provide mentorship for ambassadors paving way uh, for the youth in digital job creation. We can also consider how these ambassadors don't end up solving social issues um, with digital technologies only, but also contribute to sustaining their ideas beyond the internet. Uh, for most of the promising idea talks I had this year, I see a one-sided uh, conversation that's trying to connect people online while excluding them from um, normal life activities. So for instance, you own um, a work online, but Technically, people in your community don't even know you, so how is uh, the IGF body trying to empower the ambassadors to do more beyond the internet? Also, I believe if we continue to empower these uh, thousands of people with digital skills, but fail to help them create um, an, a sustainable job that is still online, I believe our quest to create uh, digital jobs will only be still limited to the internet. And so the IGF governing body can make plans to properly help ambassadors to create sustaining jobs that um, instead of preaching digital inclusions as a means of establishing digital jobs, we can actually preach how people can create lasting jobs for not just the youth, but people also coming after us. Thank you. Thank you. And sir, you have the floor. Oh yeah, okay, thank you. Hi, my name is Hans Klein, I'm from Georgia Tech. I want to thank France for the hosting of this lovely event. Uh, and I want to return in my comments to the role of the state of governments in internet governance. In an early ex earlier exchange of ideas in this hall, I expressed some concern about the role of the state. And it, my comments got a response that the state can solve problems of the internet. And that is, I think, certainly true. There are important issues that can be addressed. Issues like cross-border cyber warfare, issues like the online radicalization of youth, but I hasten to add that the source of many of these problems, there may be solutions offered by states, but the source of many of these problems often lies with states and governments as well, particularly in the geopolitical international relations of states that create problems uh, that perhaps states can later solve only after they've created them. So we find, uh, why do we have cross-border cyber warfare today? A major reason is because of yesterday's uh, international politics, particularly the expansion of NATO, and we're seeing the start of a new Cold War. There's a lot of talk about that. So an earlier strategy of, of uh, conflict has generated cyber warfare and cyber attacks, which we now struggle to solve. But perhaps the best solution to solve the problems is not to provoke them in the first place. Likewise, why do we have online radicalization of youth, particularly uh, Islamic radicalization? And again, we find here, if we look back a few years, that the cause lies significantly with state action and the various wars in the Middle East that destabilized countries, uh, Iraq, Syria, uh, Libya, and so on. And again, online radicalization lies with actions like those, and it was state action. So as we consider new models of internet governance, I repeat, let us be wary of states that bring a certain logic of international relations to governance. It may be the internet stability and security are better served by multi-stakeholderism uh, and not by states and geopolitics. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Anya, was there an, someone online?
So, voy a leer. I'm going to read a comment by Karina Mirado from the Internet Society for Cybersecurity. Thank you very much, IGF. One more year. I'm participating remotely, and I represent the technical community of the Internet Society Cy Cybersecurity. We are united around a neutral, free, and safe Internet for all, a secure Internet for all. There must be a multi-stakeholder participation in order to get to better know these subjects, these very important subjects discussed during the national and regional IGF meetings and the summit, which is the international IGF forum. Thank you. Thank you. You have the floor. Hello, everybody. My name is Rebecca Crosby, and I represent um, the faith-based community. Um, so my background is that 20 years ago, I worked in a sub-Saharan country, developing country, and the humiliating part of that was every fortnight trudging eight hours to the city, literally spending another eight, nine hours knocking on anybody's doors, uh, international banks, international hotels, multinational companies, anybody that would let us use their communications to reach back home and to get messages and important things out. And uh, obviously, um, I was in the position, I was privileged, I had the finance and the backing um, to be able to pay for that. And so uh, once I even paid a, year's, a national's year's salary for three minutes internet access, and I wasted a minute of that crying with all the frustration. Um, now obviously that's developed and things have changed over time. Um, but I think the issue for me is that, is that we need to see that equality in place and uh, we've heard about the policies we've heard about sharing information but I am very grateful this is my first IGF and I'm very grateful not just for the sharing of ideas but for the sharing of um, the fact that it needs to be a human right to have that access but it's no good having the access if the infrastructure is not there. Um, I heard last week of uh, 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 an African millionaire who flew his children to uh, European hospitals and lived in a mansion and had lots of staff and he was found recently dead face down in the dirt uh, on the side of the road with his mobile phone in his hand and he was looking up uh, symptoms of a heart attack and there was no internet connection and he died. So what's the point of having the resources if the infrastructure is not in place? I, I, I'm really excited about beautiful pearls, but I'd much more be excited about the farming implements of that where it's accessible to all. So thank you. Thank you. Access is a, is a very core concern of, of our activities here. Susan? Um, and thank you to our French hosts to UNESCO, to the UN Department of Economic and Social Affairs, and to Chengatai and his team at the IG, sorry, this microphone's really low. I think it's, I'm just gonna take it off. There we go. Um, and uh, Lynn, to you for uh, having produced a tremendous 13th annual Internet Governance Forum. The United States supports the multi-stakeholder approach and as such, the United States supports the IGF. Discussions and deliberations in multi-stakeholder fora are enriched by the perspectives of different stakeholders and collaboration between different stakeholders is necessary to make the internet work. It is in multi-stakeholder institutions, not multilateral ones, where internet governance questions are best addressed. The success of the internet depends on finding consensus amongst stakeholders, not on votes by governments. We will meet a year from now in Berlin for the 14th IGF. With 13 years of experience to build on, the multi-stakeholder advisory group and the IGF community has the data it needs to create a more relevant IGF to some stakeholder groups, namely governments. We need to thread the needle between an IGF that is more relevant to government and an IGF that produces outputs, development of which cannot involve negotiations or trade-offs because that's not the spirit of the IGF. I am sure that we can thread that needle through discussions and outreach over the coming year, and in particular because we have the stability and support provided by the German government in advance. 
the spirit of the IGF is collaboration between and amongst all stakeholders through transparent processes and with input provided from the bottom up by the community. NTIA, the National Telecommunications and Information Administration, is eager to work with the IGF community towards a vibrant 14th annual IGF in Berlin, Germany. Thank you. Thank you. You have the floor. Thank you. My name is Mira Salamela, and I am an activist from Finland. And in a very Finnish way, I'll go straight to the point. And <laughs> uh, I, I do believe that we all want a safer internet for ourselves and for our children. And I don't think this can be achieved through more surveillance, fear mongering, and restrictions. I believe that information and understanding are the answer. Uh, technology is advancing rapidly and people are using it intuitively. Education is not keeping up and people aren't being taught how to use the internet safely and how to protect themselves and their children from predators and how to take care of their mental health in the environment that can at times be depressing or hostile. I think schools all over the world should take this role of education to prevent cyberbullying and to teach kids to use social media and the rest of the internet responsibly and safely. Because uh, the internet is a great cornucopia of information and social networks and art and other things. And I think the theme internet, internet of trust means a freer global internet where we remember that internet is not just made of technology but other human beings using it. Thank you. And you have the floor. It, it should be fine. Let me go to the queue over here, Mark, then. And if somebody could check the mic on this side of the room. So, Mark, you have the floor. Hey, Lynn, thank you very much. Uh, Mark Carvel, United Kingdom Government, Department for Digital, Culture, Media, and Sport. Hello, everybody. Um, first of all, uh, thanks uh, as the UK government to the French government for hosting this year's uh, IGF. Special thanks to David Martinon, he's not there, but uh, <laughs> at the moment, to, uh, for, for driving this forward with such uh, verve and, uh, and energy and uh, inimitable style, I have to say. That's been great, and thanks to the steering committee as a whole and to the secretariat, Cengatai, uh, and uh, to the MAG. Uh, for all their hard work in developing the program and, and setting the, up this event and also steering forward the intercessional work which is uh, a critical uh, aspect of the IGF's work now. It's not a single event, it's, it's, it's uh, throughout the year thanks to a lot of effort uh, and despite shortage of resources and I'll come on to that in a minute. First of all, I, secondly I want to say that um, this year we had the largest number of UK government policy experts at an IGF. It was about 20 from, from uh, across our government, not only my ministry, but other ministries as well. Uh, and also we had uh, experts from our independent regulator, Ofcom, here. So that reflects the, the criticality of the IGF program that was constructed this year, that our policymakers felt that it was important to be here, to engage with uh, stakeholders, experts from other constituencies, private sector, technical community, civil society, and so on. And I hope very much more governments will understand the importance of being here and, and allow their policymakers the time to make it to the IGF and participate in, in discussions and hear from other stakeholders uh, so that our policy development as, as government policy leads is enhanced and, and enriched. The UK government also uh, appreciates very much the work of the MAG 
in implementing the recommendations of the Commission of Science and Technology for Development for improving the IGF and also the outcomes of the UN retreat in 2016 and also the proposals that come out of the annual stock taking. That's a lot of uh, you know, reaction and thoughts and ideas and proposals to, to digest and the MAG is now looking at that, I know, with a lot of energy, with working groups set up and so on. And we very much hope that that work continues uh, with uh, focus and direction in order to make the next uh, IGF, the 14th one in, in Berlin, even more successful than this one. And our deep appreciation to the German government uh, for hosting uh, the IGF next year. And also very much endorse your message, uh, Lynn, to other governments uh, to look at the possibility of hosting the IGF. It does need to move around through the continents. We've been in Europe uh, twice and we will be in Europe again next year. We've got to move this uh, forum at the heart of the internet ecosystem around through the world. So very much endorse that message. And finally, another message to governments, that is to step forward, to the, step up to the plate that is the UN Trust Fund that finances all of this. Without those donations, this wouldn't happen. UK government has been an annual contributor to the UN Trust Fund ever since the IGF was started. We're going to up our contribution, in fact. So uh, I hope that's uh, welcome news. Uh, but there's not enough. Thank you. <laughs> but, but you... This needs more money, especially with all the extremely important intercessional work that's being undertaken. That matrix of activity contributes to tangible outcomes. It needs secretariat support. I looked at Anya in particular, who's done enormous amount of work on the intercessional side. You, Anya, need help. So very much endorse your message to governments, but also to the private sector. This needs money, so I hope very much uh, you, uh, the message will uh, resonate. We'll do our best as UK government to communicate that across our uh, networks of, of government contacts. I've gone over considerably. Sorry about that. Thank you. Considerably, but it would have been quite silly to cut you off in the middle of making a plea for <laughs> more, more support and resources. Thank you for your patience. You have the floor. Bonjour, je m'appelle uh, Benin. My name is Peter Evening from the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and I'm in charge of the programs uh, of, in uh, projects in the program Digital 243, which uh, works in favor of digital products uh, for the African community. Before my first IGF, I didn't know that internet access was a right and that that was one of the human rights. My country is a member of the United Nations and of UNESCO. In the African countries, internet access is very expensive. I would like to therefore call on this forum, I would like to appeal to this forum, to the United Nations and to UNESCO, and ask them to uh, give greater consideration to the measures to be taken to uh, counter the, the uh, general um, exclusion from Internet that we are suffering from, uh, as well as the deprival of our freedom uh, of Internet access, as well as our freedom of uh, expression. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. You Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Bonsoir à tout le monde. Good evening. I would like to thank the chair, first of all, I would like to uh, uh, thank Meng Changatai and, and their, their entire team, as well as France and UNESCO. I'm speaking on behalf of Mr. Bajra Bong. I'm the executive secretary of the IGF in France. I would like to thank you for this opportunity. And I have some recommendations and suggestions to make. When it comes to NRIs, the NRIs play a pivotal role in the IGF. As Executive Secretary for Chad, we would like to have a sustainable financial mechanism for the NRIs, for organizing their forums, or for ensuring their participation in this forum. Since there's a UN trust fund, uh, we can use that uh, in order to allot a certain amount 
to that since the uh, IGF is carrying out uh, fantastic work, we'd like to thank them for Thanks to financing, we can organize our own IGFs with uh, the mobilization of local resources as well. And, uh, and also the role of youth in the IGF. We've discussed this in the IGF Mexico. Uh, there was a report on the role of the youth in internet governance. We need young people. Without young people, we don't have uh, tomorrow's leaders. It's true that a fantastic program is being drawn, uh, drawn up. Uh, uh, the, the, the MAC2, the IGF as such, could create a little uh, awareness raising program. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the young people, even if it's only two or three or four who could participate, young people uh, and the participation of the local community is also important. There should be more students who have uh, who are more conversant with the issues of internet governance. When it comes to the workshops, uh, when you attend the work, IGF workshops, you have to speak English. Everything's in English. As you said, language diversity is important. I think that we should be able to speak in all the UN languages. That's also of fundamental importance. So I think that we have to look at the uh, uh, mechanisms for uh, free uh, catering as well in the IGFs. I would like to say something about uh, the statutes of our IGFs. I'd like to thank the secretary of the IGF that has been performing fantastic work. There have to be more human resources to the secretary. There are much more technical and financial support to it. Thank you. Thank you. You have the floor. You've all been very patient the last few here, so we're entering the, the end. You have the floor. Bonjour à tous. Hello, uh, Mill Latham, and I am currently doing research at the University of Bath in the UK. Um, so I've heard a lot of people talking about, you know, accessibility, making sure different groups are represented. But it's important to point out that we still all belong to one community, which is a community which is lucky enough to know about the existence of the Internet Governance Forum, but also a community which is still well acquainted to concepts linked to Internet governance. Um, I've also heard a lot of criticism about you know, the absence of concrete results, um, and I think that a lot of people tend to forget the fact that beyond you know, the absence of concrete results in form of like papers or whatnot, the IGF is a place to discuss different topics and also to listen. It's a place where we exchange ideas, where people can plant seeds which actually grow into, into thoughts and then impact. Um, and so I think it's really important to maybe think about broadening the outreach of the IGF, um, including different interest groups which do not necessarily talk about internet governance on a daily basis, don't know about internet governance, um, and also reach out to expert groups. Um, I think that the inclusion, I don't know, of, of professors would be really interesting in different talks. The inclusion of lawyers and all these people who don't know about the, in, the, the existence of the IGF, but could actually contribute actively um, to listening and actually bring back these ideas that we're talking about bring them back to their communities, um, and they could also potentially, um, you know, participate and comment on, on issues and bring about new thoughts which haven't yet been approached because we're part of this, you know, very same group. Um, so there you have it. Thank you very much. Thank you. As the Secretary General said, philosophers and social scientists, political scientists, um, I think everybody would very much welcome um, a, a broader and deeper engagement. Sir, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, so I'm Ethan Sweet. I'm from the United Kingdom, and I'm here on the Internet Society Youth at IGF program. Uh, this is my first ever IGF, and since coming here and before, when I was learning about this, uh, the IGF is a place of dialogue between all stakeholders. Um, and so it was um, particularly disappointing that yesterday, um, due to room allocations, we were physically unable to fit all stakeholders in the room. 
Um, this was particularly at two events I went to. It was at the Artificial Intelligence Ethics um, event, and it was the one that I was my backup, which was the uh, inter event that looked at internet governance in general in Hall 3. I can't remember the full title. Sorry, I didn't write it down. Um, so how we should really, sorry, we should really be looking at how we um, allocate these screens, perhaps even asking participants who pre-register, not in any binding way, but ask them what events they're going to attend so that we can look at what rooms we put them in so that quite literally everyone has a s seat at the table. Um, and so the other thing I want to cover about this in dialogue, since I've got 53 seconds left, is um, participation of people in, in the room. Um, this seems to be really wildly varied between events. Some events I found um, will open the floor up about halfway in. Some events did not open the floor at all, which was really disappointing, I found. Um, so uh, as well, we should also look at being lot, a lot stronger on pushing back maybe in some events how much the panel speaks and how much stakeholders can speak because I don't know about the rest of you, but I didn't come here for listening to a lot of talking heads. I could have done that online. Thank you. Thank you. Um, sir, you're the, the last speaker, and we closed the queue about a half hour ago, and we're significantly over time. Um, thank you. Thank you very much for accommodating the rest of the, the speakers. Hello. You have the floor. Hola. Bonjour. My name is Peter Tonoli. I'm from Electronic Frontiers, Australia. Firstly, my deepest gratitude to the UN and French Republic for organizing and hosting this event and the massive logistics behind it. It is my first IGF, so please forgive my somewhat guileless comments. After the many interactions here at the IGF, I've never felt so small in a large world. Yet I'm happy to be a small player, as we are now all global citizens. Firstly, we need to be cognizant that one of the objectives that we all agree on is that we want an open internet. And the question that comes to mind after hearing President Macron's speech was can we retain an open internet while instituting the regulations and norms that have come up repeatedly over the past three days? Is there a fine line between sovereignty, regulation, and keeping the internet open and allowing innovation? And instead of increasing regulation, we can have an opportunity to empower citizens instead. Why should we, or why would we, have to regulate against fake news when we can empower citizens to critically analyze the media instead? The title of this internet, of this IGF, is Internet of Trust. And citizens will be required to increasingly trust governments and organizations like the UN due to the proposals for additional regulation. Citizens need a re reason to trust governments, and governments need to garner that trust. The mass surveillance machinery of governments, such as Five Eyes, DGSI, and FSGB, needs to stop to engender that trust. Similar comments by my colleague from Georgia Tech. A significant amount of the problems that we have today, and we're discussing today, have actually been caused by states themselves. With examples of the election of Trump in the US, the rise of right-wing involvement in government, and ever-increasing nationalism, we must persevere with multi-stakeholder and civil society involvement and cannot require re rely on government and the UN alone. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that finishes our stock-taking session. Both um, Ambassador Martino and I will have a few closing remarks in, uh, in a little while. Um, I want to just to reassure everybody that we've taken notes, and of course it's transcribed and streamed, and we'll be taken back into the MAG, into the community, and, and into the working groups for, for further action. Um, the engagement from our side was relatively little, only so we could prioritize hearing from the, from the community. But, but please, I really want you to understand that it's been well noted, and we'll, we'll take them forward. So I'll turn it back to Changatai to lead us to the rest of the agenda. Right. Uh, thank you very much, Lynn. Uh, yes, I just want to echo what Lynn has said. Uh, we've got the notes and we'll keep it in the forefront of our mind as we go on to um, IGF 2019 meeting. Um, so, so now we come to the last section of um, this closing session and we're now to the reflections, closing reflections. I would first of all like to invite Minister Munir
Majubi, um, the Digital Affairs Minister. So, thank you. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, good evening, welcome to all of you, and thank you all for having come to Paris for the past few days. And for having taken part in discussions and exchanges here. I am greatly honored to be here with you tonight to be closing the first Paris version of this uh, Internet Governance Forum. I'm also glad that you were able to take part in a memorable event yesterday, which was the new life that all of us breathed into the idea of what Internet Governance could be like, a new perspective on internet governance that is just, that is effective, and that inspires trust in citizens. And this is an ambition that President Macron mentioned during his remarks here today, uh, here on Monday, before 4,000 people. And we've heard this same kind of reasoning here and elsewhere, and we are discussing them with you. Some of you spoke about them during the past few days. Uh, we have been struggling tirelessly because we know that decisions made today will be determining ones for, t for tomorrow, for the future. And we are firmly convinced that inaction on the part of governments is not an option. Now, given the challenges that our societies face today, and given that the digital world has reached its mature stage, it is now time to take action. And we must aim at two major goals mentioned by the President of the Republic on Internet governance. The first is intelligent Internet governance. Obviously, this uh, fine line that we're trying to walk. And the second is a very important topic that is multi open multilateralism. I'll talk about it later on. And as the President mentioned, France supports an innovative take on regulation. Regulation, the regulation that we support is not old-fashioned regulation in accordance with the old formulas. It's not about control or limitations. And it's also not about laissez-faire. It's not about blind discrimination. It doesn't want to get in the way of an open and free internet. France's regulation is a new kind of regulation that will be based on clear goals and values. It is a European point of view that we need to build together. And this is why France has signed the contract for the web suggested by Tim Berners-Lee. France was the first country to join this initiative during the Lisbon Web Summit. This also is the goal of the Tech for Good initiative that we launched six months ago, and which brought together all the actors of the digital world in order to work for our common good. And now to achieve these goals, we need to regulate, because these regulations and the, these common interests are our responsibility to our peoples, our citizens. So we need to regulate intelligently. We are proposing regulation based on the accountability of the actors as well as the involvement of regulators. It's based on increased transparency, which unfortunately is lacking today, as well as innovation in the tools that we're using in order to make sure that they can help us achieve the goals that we have set and it takes, it brings together all of these stakeholders, especially civil society, in order to define these goals. This regulation has been supported by a majority of stakeholders in Europe and elsewhere in the world. But this regulation is also a decision to take responsibility because laissez-faire was the path we took until now, and it's clearly shown its limitations. So we need to do more due to this lack of regulation, as well as excessive regulation, this can lead to an over-enthusiastic or over-interpretation of the rules, and that also is not a good solution when it comes to innovation and democracy. Therefore, together, we must come together and try to find a middle ground. And one of the priorities mentioned by the French president was fighting hate speech, racist speech, anti-Semitic speech, 
and uh, other types of speech. So we need <coughs> to mo to regulate our networks, but at the same time, we um, need to differentiate between different kinds of content. France supports net neutrality, but that does not prevent us from wanting to have a voice when it comes to what content is produced and is placed on the net. The importance of this topic leads me to say that we must rethink multilateralism as applied to this field. This is the goal of regulation. We need to have the resources to actually achieve our goals from regulation. And the IGF also is based on bringing together the entire community. It is this co collaboration that is at the very heart of the IGF and at the heart of the internet, the spirit of the internet itself. Civil society, the private sector must come together and ensure that the regulation that is taking shape now is aligned with technological progress and our technological capabilities, as well as all of the causes and all of the goals of the actors of the digital re revolution. And so this multilateral aspect of the IGF is something that France supports more than ever in order to find the solution to the structural challenges that we're facing today. And at this opening ceremony, we launched the Paris Call to Action for Cyber Security uh, in order to increase international cooperation and take collective action to prevent destabilizing attacks. And with this in mind, yesterday I signed the initiative for a sustainable democracy, which ought to allow for sustainable innovation uh, toward citizen participation and the modernization of our democracies in their everyday functioning. And if we want to set rules, if we want to do so collectively, then states which are the only sovereign entities, must be able to all come to the table and adopt them. And this means that together with the discussions held by various stakeholders, we need to strengthen the multilateral aspect of IGF. And this is the goal of the French president's uh, proposal, this need for multilateralism. It is not simply a French or European point of view. This is an overall vision that is shared by many countries throughout the world that currently have been stripped of part of their sovereignty by the digital world and are facing pressure from their peoples. Because today, the internet is a reality and it affects the lives of citizens throughout the world. So as governments, we must be able to hear, to listen to our people, and together with their involvement, we must be able to build this future together. Last June, we held uh, conferences to bring together all of the stakeholders in the digital world. And, that, and we held these, uh, these stock-taking meetings because we wanted to come together as a voice on a European, national, and international level. And this has allowed us to establish a French agenda in the next few months, as mentioned by the French president. We will be building together this uh, European roadmap over the next few months with a new commission. And we also need to build a new global agenda which we will be upholding here at the IGF and which will be able to help us address all the challenges that we're facing. Now there are many opportunities for discussion in the future, for example G7, G20, next year's IGF, and I'd like to warmly thank our German colleagues who will be hosting next year's IGF, this re invented IGF, a more involved IGF, an even more multilateral IGF, an even more essential IGF. And if you were to take home one message from my speech, it is that the importance it is the importance of IGF for us and the fact that we want to work together with IGF in order to make decisions and to do this we need to take on our responsibility as actors. We have a great deal of work in front of us as well as the opportunity 
to shape the world before us as many of you have been hoping for for decades. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister. Uh, we will now go to our community representatives selected by the MAG uh, to say a few words. Pardon? Oh, it's pointed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, the first speaker is uh, Ms. Noah Ashraf Abdel Baki from the Digital Grassroots Organization and Youth Capacity Building Volunteer Program. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Noha Ashraf Abdel Baki. I'm Egyptian and I'm an ambassador for the Internet Society, for the IGF, and the founder of Digital Grassroots, which is a youth initiative for Internet governance. I am very honored to be here speaking on behalf of the youth during the closing ceremony of the IGF 2018. An internet of trust, which is today's, this year's theme, means internet that includes young people, women, the disabled, and other vulnerable groups. And often young women in particular face challenges when it comes to internet governance, which is male dominated. And therefore, we need more than ever to create online and offline spaces that are safe and open for an inclusive dialogue between young people and other stakeholders. Digital Grassroots is a youth led initiative. And it was launched during the IGF 2017 in Geneva through IGF Youth Fellows and by 10 different countries, young people. Now we have young people coming from over 40 countries that speak in English and French and talk about the principles of Internet citizenship. And we've also provided recommendations on how to contribute to and participate in on a local level as well as in other spheres in the internet community. In addition, thanks to cooperation with various other actors such as the Internet Society and the private sector as well as the civil society, we've held events in various countries such as Kenya, Tanzania, Nigeria, South Africa and Zambia in order to promote our vision. The co-founders and ambassadors have taken part in various national and regional forums that address internet governance as well as taking part in agreements on internet governance and other rel related events. We also hope that the concrete implementation of this vision will take place and that youth participation in IGF will be effective. Young people can provide creative and innovative solutions. As, a young, as young people, we have come together to express our concerns with regard to the small number of workshops dedicated to this topic. to express our concerns with regard to the small number of workshops on the topic of youth and gender 2018, as well as the low number of participants in these workshops. We've sent a petition to the IGF community to increase participation of young people in the IGF. And everyone, we ask everyone to sign this petition in order to better take into account our concerns. The incorporation of 
uh, youth expertise in the first stages of preparation for the IGF, especially when it comes to the design and selection of workshops. We also are concerned by the lack of uh, the absence of Internet Society, for example, on the program. And for the IGF in Berlin, we hope to see a higher number of scholarships offered to young people in the panel. And to conclude, I'd like to cite one of my colleagues who has who said that the that the thirteenth the thirteenth IGF has reached the adolescent years. It shows that young people are indeed very important actors when it comes to reform and reshaping of the IGF so that it become a multilateral platform for dialogue that is accessible to everyone and especially to young people. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, no. Our next speaker is Ms. Liz Fur, Director General of the European Telecommunications Network Operators Association, ETHNO. Your Excellencies, distinguished stakeholder representatives, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, bonjour. Unfortunately, my French is not good enough, so I'll uh, speak in, uh, in English. I'm the Director General of, European, uh, of the European Telecommunication Network Operators Association, and I'm representing here today the private sector as a member of ICC basis, of ICC Business Action to Support the Information Society, or BASIS, which many of you know is the global business focal point for constructive engagement on WISIS and IGF. We came to Paris this year for the 13th Internet Dominance Forum under the theme Internet of Trust. Discussions over the last three days have underscored strong private sector commitment to build trust in both the internet and in information and communication te technologies. Business takes this responsibility seriously, not only because it's a sound business case to ensure users of ICTs feel secure when using them, but also to strengthen and broaden the multi-stakeholder participation. Inputs from multiple stakeholders cultivate a shared understanding of the issues at hand and ignite a desire and willingness to address them collaboratively. This approach circles around to promote trust among the full range of stakeholders represented here today at IGF. Businesses comes to IGF here because we believe in the value of this multi-stakeholder model of internet governance. Gathering at the forum this year, all stakeholders can be assured of an open, frank, and informed conversation, which is invaluable for all our consideration on how to establish trusted policy frameworks for ICT. And also how to make sure policy environments and are conducive to continued and sustainable investments in ICTs and innovation. To create an, an enabling environment, we have identified three fundamental pillars. Firstly, we must ensure all interoperable and seamless ICT ecosystems by ensuring infrastructure applications and services are all in place with full support for user engagement. Secondly, we need to ensure holistic policy approaches by considering the full range of policy issues and options, including economic, societal and cultural, technical and governance related issues. And finally, we must encourage the participation of all relevant stakeholders in policy making processes. 
each stakeholder community will leave the IGF today with a better understanding of all the needs and the ideas of others. This open environment and participation of all stakeholders, including businesses, included civil society, and including technical community, as the best way to provide governments with the 360 degrees information that develops a fuller understanding of the issues and appropriate policy options they should consider. So it's essential to preserve the IGF's fundamental character as a bottom-up, all-inclusive, multi-stakeholder mechanism for participation. The IGF has served successfully as a laboratory for the exchange, discussion, and dissemination of best practices, technical expertise, and capacity building initiatives among all stakeholders. And it's this flexibility, transparency, and inclusiveness of the IGF's multi-stakeholder model that has enabled the internet to flourish as a platform for innovation and economic development that we have come to know. It has also advanced the WISIS goal to expand to expand it con connectivity and inclusiveness. So it is imperative that this model is retained going forward. We do not come here to negotiate, but you would be wrong to believe that our discussions is in this forum do not result in actions and projects. Businesses come to build partnerships with civil society, with governments, and also across industries. Just one example is Microsoft's Airband Initiative. This global initiative is helping to bridge digital divides by providing TV white space devices and other low-cost wireless technologies, contributing affordable broadband access to rural communities all around the world, from the US countries to Latin America, Africa, Asia, and Europe. This project was sparked at the 2011 IGF meeting in Nairobi, where an early demo and a discussion led to our first trial in a remote village in Nanyuki, also in Kenya. Today, the initiative has seen partnership with local communities, technology providers, and governments in commercial deployments and pilots connecting the unconnected in over 30 countries around the world. Another example is Telefonica's Internet para todos, Internet for all, which was inspired by the intercessional work on connecting the next billion within IGF, and it aims to expand connectivity in remote areas. Our projects are unique but their roots are not. There are multitudes of projects that had their beginnings at an IGF. We urge you to share them widely. Only by capturing and promoting the discussions we have here, we can illustrate and communicate tangible IGF results. In this regard, private sector members on the MAC have also put forward a number of proposals on how to improve the marketing and advertising of the existing IGF work. And the IGF does not end here. We need to ensure that the IGF circle and the work undertaken throughout the year leading up to all these discussions is both clear and accessible to all who wish to contribute. With this in mind, the private sector is leading an initiative in the MAC to visualize and promote the IGF program framework. We are seeking your views and input on how to make the most of this. Ladies and gentlemen, the business community is your committed partner to build trust in and by way of the multi-stakeholder model. This is the true nature of IGF, which we value. We look forward to building on our work here at this unique forum to build an inclusive, sustainable, and people-centered internet 
as a means to attaining the WISA's vision and the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and its 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Fern. I'll call upon the next speaker for the technical community, Mr. Sumon Ahmed Sabir, CTO of Fiber at Home. Uh, good evening, everyone, and uh, thank you very much to the technical community for giving me the opportunity to talk here on behalf of the technical community and uh, at the third year of MAG, and it's my pleasure to be uh, work for the IGF for the last three years. And I must mention that uh, IGF and, and MAG is a not a natural place for the technical community, and uh, the level of rich depth abstraction needed in the discussion, sometimes the technical com community feel uncomfortable. But I must mention that uh, the technical community is doing great job in planning for IGF, bringing problems, discussing the issues. And uh, along with that, we also produce some very good document in terms of BPF, like IPv6 BPF, IXP BPF, and also we are currently working on IoT, Big Data, and AI BPF. Saying that, that uh, as a part of the MAC, making, uh, designing the uh, plan for the IGF program, we need to do a lot of balance. Sometimes we do not find technical contents, technical proposals. Sometimes the discussion output are not really matching the technical reality, but there's always we need to do a compromise. And a good compromise with the other community and eventually, all the community find out a value out of the discussion. And uh, recently, we are uh, seeing more pressure and demand on the IGF for a tangible outcomes. You can recall the speech from the UN Secretary General and from the President of France. And uh, there is a real pressure on IGF to come up with some sort of solutions. But as a part of the technical community, I must mention that there are some practical issues we can solve technically, very quickly, but there are some issues that are not practical, and either we need to learn how to live with, with it, or we need to find other ways to solve this issue. And that requires more and more engagement with other community. And in IGF, we, as a technical community, what I see that we should bring the technical issue and we should place it to the other community member in a simpler and no, uh, lang language in an understandable manner so that we can uh, get to understand each other. On the other hand, we need to understand the views of the other communities. Some technical issues, the way we see after discussion the IGF, we find it more complete and sometimes more complicated, but we get better solution in the IGF. And uh, and, uh, and I wish that uh, we can apply more technical solution and we can find solution to all the IGFs, but I, did, I think we need to be more patient. And we need to understand each other, we need to gain trust and if we can really build the internet for trust, we can resolve many other problems easily. And uh, thank you very much once again. And I really enjoyed working with Mag in the IGF. And I wish a bright future for internet governance and future internet. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Simon. Mm -hmm. Our next speaker is Mr. Moes Chakchuk, Assistant Director General for Communications and Information of UNESCO.
votre ex Your Excellency. Distinguished guests and friends and colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor for me to uh, take part once again in the IGF and to take part in the 2018 edition of the Internet Governance Forum. I, I missed the last three, uh, but I'm taking part in the one held in France. It's an honor for me. The discussions over these three days uh, approached uh, essential issues linked to uh, Internet governance, but above all, to find common responses in order to guarantee peace and an Internet of trust. That's the theme of this year's uh, forum. The discussions we held showed that when we speak and when we talk about uh, in universal access to the Internet and Internet governance, we have to go well beyond the matters of connectivity and infrastructure. We have to adopt a global approach. We have to take account of the human dimension. And we have to adopt an, an approach that is equal to, 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 to the challenges uh, of uh, digital competence and linguistic diversity. Uh, we have to, uh, to carry out policies that are favorable to the development and to the expansion of the Internet. For UNESCO, the Forum on Internet Governance represents a major event uh, uh, by way of follow-up to the World a Summit on the Information Society and to extend our horizons on go Internet governance. Therefore, we're delighted for having hosted you at our headquarters, a center of exchange of information in the Laboratory for Ideas, which makes Internet's, inter Internet governance a priority in its agenda and its, and its actions. Through our work on the promotion of language diversity on the Internet, uh, the increase of its accessibility for the handicapped and uh, indigenous populations, as well as our work on gender equality. The UNES UNESCO has, in fact, uh, been endeavoring to meet the challenges of universal Internet access. But UNESCO's work on Internet governance uh, is also closely linked to our continued reflection on the role of artificial intelligence in the promotion of knowledge-based societies and good governance. In this respect, and directly following on the uh, IGF, UNESCO will be organizing tomorrow, in partnership with the Internet Society, an open uh, debate on uh, artificial intelligence. The Mozilla Foundation is another co-organizer. It will be devoted to the study of the technological, ethical, political, social, and legal implications of the development of AI applications. Uh, uh, of course, I have the pleasure of inviting you to these discussions, even online which uh, promised to be very enriching both for us and for the entire community. Ladies and gentlemen, a lot remains to be done to create an online environment where human rights are fully upheld and where the Internet is really accessible to all. The principles of Internet universality, that is uh, an Internet based on human rights, one that's open, accessible to all, and one that is uh, fed by the uh, participation of many stakeholders should guide us in this work. The Internet should continue to benefit all our societies and their individuals. And it should help to maintain trust between the different stakeholders who contributed and who continue to contribute to the development of the Internet worldwide. The IGF has underscored the fact that Internet governance still raises many issues. We have to keep these issues in mind. We have to continue our inclusive uh, dialogues and continue our collective efforts to find sustainable responses to the challenges raised by Internet governance. Ladies and gentlemen, I could not conclude my presentation without thanking all of the participants, the speakers, and the organizers of the IGF. I would also like to express my gratitude to France for having hosted this year's IGF. And in particular, I would like to thank Ambassador and my dear friend uh, David Martidon and his team that, that worked very hard to make this event a success, in particular Dalila Rahmouni as well as Pierre Bonis, uh, whom I was delighted to uh, meet this year, as well as uh, the who is the coordinator of the organizing committee there. Work uh, bears out uh, the continued commitment by the French government to make sure that the inter Internet governance, information technologies, and uh, more broadly, the digital transformation remain at the heart of the sustainable development program. And I would like to thank 
Lynn Santamour, the chair of the uh, multi-stakeholder advisory group and her team, as well as all the contributors who created an interactive, uh, uh, sorry, an inclusive and transparent process and who prepared for this very fruitful event. I would also like to thank uh, UNESCO as a whole, in particular Judith and Sarah and Sasha, as, uh, all, and all the other teams who worked within UNESCO in partnership with the French government. Finally, I would like to thank all the participants who really believed in the importance of this dialogue, uh, who thought that the community was uh, faltering to a certain extent, but who've uh, now come to see that we have to continue our cooperation, the successful cooperation between the French government and the um, NAG, the Secretariat of the IGF and UNESCO, is a, is a uh, very uh, strong symbol of what could be achieved at the international level when we all work together for better internet government governance. On behalf of UNESCO, on behalf of Director General, Madame Azoulé, I would like to reaffirm our strong commitment to the IGF and thank you all for your contribution to the discussions held over these last three days. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Maurice. I would now like to call the IGF MAC Chair, Ms. Lynn Santamol. I will work to keep my remarks quite short. Um, in addition to the thanks I mentioned at the beginning of this session, I'd like to add my very sincere thanks to the outgoing MAG for all their support and all their efforts over the past year. In addition to overseeing the program activities of the annual meeting and all the intersessional activities, again, such as the best practice forums, dynamic coalitions, and the Connecting and Enabling the Next Billions major policy initiative, we actually have had um, considerable efforts put into a number of strategic and operational issues, largely through five MAG working groups, working group on IDGF improvements, a working group on multi-year strategic work plan, a working group on fundraising, a working group on comms and outreach, and finally a, work group on, uh, a working group on workshop evaluation and selection process. All those working groups are actually open to the community. They're led by the MAG, but they're open to the community. So this is actually where a lot of the comments we've actually heard today will go to be advanced within either MAG work directly or in any new working groups that the MAG should, should um, decide to move forward with. None of this would have been possible, though, without the exceptional support of the IGF Secretariat, which is a very lean, and we've heard two times, and many times, too lean, but exceptionally competent and dedicated Secretariat. So I'd really like to thank Changatai, Eleonora, Anya, and Lewis. That's an indication of just how lean the Secretariat is, and a few very dedicated um, consultants as well for all the work they actually support over the year. So I'd like to give both the MAG and this year as well we had strong support from staff in the Department of Economic and Social Affairs and for that we give our thanks we honestly couldn't have made the progress we made this year in many areas without the efforts and in particular Denise and Wyman are here in the in the audience with us still um, excitingly and I believe for the first time ever, it may not be true, but I think for the first time ever, we actually have a new MAG announced and ready to start work tomorrow. Most of you may not know the current MAG and the current chair stand down at the end of every IGF. Um, so that's in the past has actually left um, quite a gap, nearly four months in the last few years. So this is such a, uh, such a big benefit uh, to, the, to the community and to the MAG for all the work we actually need to do. And for that, I'd really like to thank the Secretary General, the Secretary General's office, specifically ASG Fabrizio, who I know was um, very key in making this happen, and the DESA staff. Um, I would say it was none too early, given the uh, challenges and uh, opportunities we've actually heard here, both from the Secretary General himself, from President Macro, and certainly from all the aspirations in the, in the community. There is certainly no shortage of work to be done. 
So while it's clear we have a lot of work cut out for us, as a community we're going to have to examine what's appropriate, obviously respecting our mandate, what's possible within the resources we can actually um, pull together, and as a community-led effort, then prioritize and look to the community to help us support and resource those efforts. There are many other challenges that we've kind of brought along from past years. We have still um, a, um, a strong desire to increase the participation of senior policymakers and governments. We heard reference to that a number of times here over the last week, and from the private sector as well. Um, and that gets to the heart, I think, of the benefit of the IGF, but also um, the places where so many of what we actually talk about here can, can duly be, be advanced. So we're going to need to think carefully about how we engage that across the community. Um, I would ask everybody to stay tuned. We will work to start the induction um, efforts for the new MAG next week. Not tomorrow. Many people will be on planes. But next week, there's not a lot of time to lose. And um, again, welcome the incoming MAG. The list is actually published on the um, IGF website. And, um, Luckily, we have about two-thirds of the MAG returning this year, so we have a strong core of, um, of uh, people who are already deeply engaged in the effort and look forward to a lot of new energy and enthusiasm for the new members. And I'd just like to, again, I mentioned at the top of the hour, but thank UNESCO um, for their support here, um, for, um, as they said, Judith and Sasha in particular, for a lot of the um, efforts to host us here. And then, of course, to Ambassador Martino, the organizing team, Pierre Bonis. Um, we really couldn't have done it without their efforts and, and all the, the volunteers. Mostly, though, we couldn't do it without the community. We couldn't do it without the community participating day in, day out in every one of the efforts, whether it's through a national, regional, and IGF youth initiative or through it's the working groups or the BPFs. It's critically important that you stay engaged. Let us know what's working, what's not working, and what you think. Um, I want to thank everybody for their efforts, their passion, their commitment, and look forward to a very exciting 2019. Thank you. Thank you very much, Len. Our next speaker is Ambassador David Matino, the co-chair uh, from the host country. Please, you have the floor. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chengi Tai. In fact, this will be my last speech as a digital ambassador because tomorrow I will be handing the keys of my office over to my friend Henri Verdier, who was foolhardy enough to accept my job. Good luck to you, and thank you for your work over the IGF. But I haven't prepared very much in terms of closing remarks, and since the minister has already spoken, I will uh, speak. Mm, on a more personal note, my first IGF was five years ago, 2013, in Indonesia. It was in Bali, but uh, for my wife it was better that I said in Indonesia. But anyway, it, it was uh, this is just a few weeks after Moes, who was still a s cyber dissident from Tunisia, invited us to the Tunis Forum. One week after Snowden's revelation, so you can imagine the pressure on, uh, on our shoulders uh, from from civil society. We, as representatives of states, five years uh, then in Ottawa last February, Lynn told me that it would be a good idea if France were to host the IGF of 2018, and I came back to Paris. I made that proposal because uh, IG, IGF is a perennial institution. This is its 13th uh, um, edition. It's a UN institution, and France is deeply attached to the United Nations. France considers that the United Nations system can be, can be a place where uh, Internet governance is discussed, uh, that the IGF has a very specific characteristic, that is, its universality, which we don't necessarily find in other institutions. So I made that proposal, which was accepted, 
And so we began preparing for the 2018 IGF with Pierre, Damila, Lynn, uh, the Secretariat, so that we could meet here for these three days in Paris. What I would like to say before I leave you is that I'm sure you can attest to my commitment to the IGF. We need the IGF, and we need the IGF to become even more prominent, to shoulder even more responsibilities. Therefore, it will be necessary for the IGF to change, to continue its um, development, that is. That is what its very mandate recommends it to do. The IGF's mandate, or the terms of reference, delivered at the uh, World Summit on the Information Society and renewed in December 2015 in New York, invites the IGF to prepare recommendations on a certain number of subjects. The IGF is very good at identifying uh, new subjects involving digital technology. The IGF, that is this community, understood before the rest of the world did what the major issues for debate would be. Uh, some subjects have disappeared, others will reappear. But what we know with certainty is, as the President of the Republic said the day before yesterday, states will have to prepare regulations. The objective is for those regulations to be as intelligent and as appropriate as possible in order to avoid the excesses that the minister um, addressed. These regulations must be up to date. They must take account of the latest developments in the digital world. As far as the developments go, it's you, the technical community, the users community, the, the entrepreneurs who uh, have mastery over those developments. So in order for there not to be a gap between the regulations and uh, the, the development of the digital community, it's important for the community to express itself and to deliver its opinions. And those opinions must be uh, made in writing. They must be transmissible. France, from day one, from, from the summit on the Information Society, has affirmed and reaffirmed its attachment to the multi-stakeholder model. We think that the time has come for this community to invent the grammar of that model it, in order for it to be fully effective. If you want, if we want your recommendations, your opinions to be uh, heated, it's important to uh, think over the process for elaborating, for drafting this content. It's important for you to invent this grammar for the multi-stakeholder model. How to best uh, represent all of the stakeholders. How to organize the consulta consultations that are as clear, transparent, and effective as possible. How to see to it that these written opinions are easily communicated, are known to all, so that each decision maker and some people have regretted that there weren't enough here, that each decision maker can really take these opinions and use them. I would like to make one last recommendation before leaving to you, the community. Take up those subjects. Go farther than the previous editions have. Continue to build on what our Swiss friends did with the Geneva messages. Take power. Invent your own rules. Today, the multi-stakeholder model is an idea which uh, deserves to be further fleshed out and which really deserves to prosper. That is why we are so committed to that model that we negotiated with others and particularly with the private sector, the, the Paris call that the President of the Republic referred to because we think, in fact, we're convinced that especially when it comes to uh, the stability of cyberspace and cybersecurity, an interstate discussion is no longer sufficient. We have to reach a certain number of goals. We have to ban certain practices. The only way to achieve that today, given 
the situation of the multilater multilateral dialogue is also to engage a dialogue with the private stakeholders so that we can co-construct the and co-draft these standards. The Paris call, two days after it was launched, has already proven a great success. More than 54 states have signed up to it. More than 200 companies have. More than a 100 civil society organizations have. I've rarely seen such a strong startup for any uh, multiple stakeholder initiative. I advise you to endorse it, to analyze it, and I advise the IGF to continue its work on this Paris call. The Paris call is a call to find new ideas and to begin cooperation arrangements that will make it possible for us better to fight against reverse hacking, for example, or proliferation of cyber weapons or the proliferation of fake news during um, democratic elections. It's an appeal. Use it. In the debate, uh, I heard that, uh, that you would like uh, companies and the states to be to show greater presence in the IGFs. I am convinced that this is necessary. To that end, concrete, pragmatic measures need to be taken. I'll discuss this with you, Fabrizio, afterwards if you want. But everyone has a role to play. I commit, and I encourage you all to participate. I will stop here. I'm sure that you're convinced of my commitment to the institution that brings us together here today. I would like to thank all of those who participated, all of those who worked on this. I am so deeply attached to this that my next mission and my next position would be to convince Afghan civil society, which has been so courageous, and some have made, their, made it all the way to Paris to take part in the IGF, to convince Afghan civil society to organize and to host the next IGF so that we can all meet again in Kabul in the near future. Thank you very much, Ambassador. And Afghanistan does have a very strong and vibrant national IGF. Um, I would like to call for our, a speaker from our next host country, who is uh, Dr. Daniela Brunstrup, Deputy Director General from the Ministry of the Economy from Germany. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, this was an outstanding IGF with so many attendees from all over the world, from the different stakeholder groups, and with a very interesting, excellent, balanced program. Thanks to France, thanks to the United Nations, and thanks to the MAG for organizing this IGF in such a few months. This was great. This deserves praise and recognition. Congratulations. You set the bar very high for us next year in Germany. As you all know already, the next IGF will take place next November in Berlin. And what has been achieved here is an incentive now for us to reach the same level and also to meet your expectations that you shared with us in the stock taking session right now. We promise we'll take our example from France and from Switzerland and we'll let ourselves and our preparation being inspired from you by the dedication and the commitment and the ideas of the IGF community. We are looking very much forward to working with all of you because this is what IGF is all about. It's a multi-stakeholder forum. You and us and those out there who are not yet part of our community, we are all together what the IGF is. It's a, we are the multi-stakeholders fighting for an open, secure, reliable, and truly global internet, free from censorship, discrimination, and propaganda. We will do our best next year to get all key stakeholders from all regions of the world to Berlin, especially also from the Global South. 
Ladies and gentlemen, Germany is honored to host the IGF 2019. We applied because we deeply believe in the IGF and the multi-stakeholder approach. For us, the IGF is the most important international dialogue platform on the future of the Internet. And I'm very happy and honored representing the German government today to kindly invite all of you to Berlin in 2019. Berlin is a very good place to host the IGF. Those of you who have been there already will know that, and all the others, I'm sure, will see next year. Berlin is an open and vibrant city with people from everywhere in the world with coming with different perspectives, different experiences and knowledges. The city has a very strong startup community and an ever-growing creative, creative scene. Every day, Berlin is attracting new talents, new ideas, new investments, and we believe Berlin is and remains a place for visions. And in November 2019, it's you and us, the IGF multi-stakeholder community who will use and should use the spirit of the city to give birth to new ideas on how to tackle the most pressing issues on the internet. See you all next year in Berlin. Our website is right now going online as well as our Twitter account. So please visit www.igf2019.berlin. And now, please enjoy the world release of our IGF 2019 movie. That should start now. If a president of a country has to call the owner of the internet, who should he or she call? There's nobody. But it doesn't mean that there are no rules. We have a social problem that is associated with the use of these media, and we have to educate people. Offline human rights and fundamental rights should be the same in the online world. We need to remember that technology should not take away our humanity. 20 years ago, the internet was more or less a technical issue with some political implications. But today, it's a political issue with a technical component. Artificial intelligence is a super powerful technology. Virtual reality, big data, criminal activities on the internet, all of those are incredibly important. I do feel that we are an adaptive society. The Internet Governance Forum will help sustain the internet and make it stronger. Everyone who has a stake in a topic that's being under discussion can have an equal opportunity. Let's keep working together to transform the internet and get it a safe and democratic space. Digitalisierung kann nur mit Vertrauen gelingen. Wir danken den französischen Gastgebern und wir freuen uns darauf, die Diskussion in Berlin fortzusetzen. Berlin is really a vibrant place, specifically the tech community and the digital community. In Deutschland arbeiten viele engagierte Menschen daran mit, das Internet der Zukunft zu gestalten. Die vor uns liegenden Aufgaben verlangen internationale Zusammenarbeit und gegenseitiges Vertrauen. Lassen Sie uns gemeinsam nach Lösungen suchen. Ich freue mich auf Ihren Besuch und lade Sie herzlich zum Internet Governance Forum 2019 nach Berlin ein. So welcome to Berlin. Many thanks. Thank you very much, Ms. Brunstrup. Our final speaker representing the United Nations Secretary General is Mr. Fabricio Hochschild, Assistant Secretary General for Strategic Coordination in the Executive Office of the Secretary General. So excellent. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues and friends joining us online from around the world. We're in the last minutes 
of this intensive and impressive learning and policy journey which unfolded over the past 48 hours under the central theme of the Internet of Trust. And I must thank you, especially those of you still in the room, for your incredible patience. I wish I could say it will be uh, rewarded by patisserie and drinks afterwards, but uh, I'm afraid resources are lacking. And I'll come back to resources. Um, at the outset, I, I have to thank President Macron for setting us out on this journey with a unique, visionary, and very stimulating introduction. I have to thank France not only for their initiative and intellectual inspiration provided not just by uh, President Macron's speech, but also by the Paris call, but also for their incredible generosity as hosts. We were honored not only by, the President, by President Macron, but also by His Excellency the Foreign Minister Jean-Yves Le, Le Drian, by Minister Madrubi, by uh, an old friend to, to, to many of us, uh, David Martinot, whom we wish very well in Kabul, and hopefully we will be able to join him there at some point. And uh, I'd like to welcome the new uh, ambassador, Henri Verdier. Um, and I'd like to thank the very dedicated team that worked with them. Of course, I'd also like to thank my colleagues and friends at UNESCO, and in particular, the Director General, Madame Azoulay, who also provided stimulating remarks at the beginning of the session, as well as offering us her facilities and support throughout. But above all, I think those who deserve the most thanks are, of course, you, the participants. Uh, there were over 2,000 on site and many more online in 140 countries, representing all stakeholders. 40 3% of the participants here in Paris were women. Uh, let's hope we can do better in Germany, uh, frankly. Uh, you know, this is uh, 2018, we should have gender parity, and that is, of course, one of the recurring criticisms of the tech uh, community is that lack of parity, and I must confess that I'm part of it. Uh, uh, you know, if we look at the podium, um, I'm the wrong gender. Um, Collectively, you all represent the IGF's multi-stakeholder model. And I would like to caution something that came up in the comments that sort of opposed multilateralism with multi-stakeholder. I mean, multilateralism increasingly is multi-stakeholder in its approach. And I think there are some wonderful examples of that, including the Paris Climate Agreement, which was very much part of a uh, multi-stakeholder uh, approach, or the 2030 Agenda, which was also a multi-stakeholder and multilateral uh, endeavor. But you are the core of this approach, and we, a big thanks to you. We salute you, we bow to you, we admire you. Um, the statistics I quoted on the number of participants are quite impressive, but what matters even more is the dynamics, the full rooms, the buzz in the corridors, and I regret that one room was too full, as one of the uh, commentators said. From those rich discussion, I picked up uh, on three key issues. I also picked up a cold, as you can tell. Um, one was on trust, the other was on data, and a third was on ethics. Trust is in the title of this IGF, a global deficit of trust between countries and within countries, as well as towards multilateral organization, is a theme frequently elaborated on by the UN Secretary General. And I think a theme of distrust towards government was also a theme of many of those who took the floor before, as well as distrust towards the UN. Over the last three days, you managed to dive deep into these questions of digital trust. You move from an abstract notion to identifying ways and means how to improve trust. Trust increases with more awareness of how technology functions. Trust improves with transparency. Trust depends on accountability of industry, governments, and also of us individual users. Trust is also about ethics as the sessions on artificial intelligence very clearly identified. Society, including a digital one, 
cannot function without a basis of trust. I would like to encourage both you and our UN panel uh, on digital cooperation to look further into concrete ways of uh, securing increased trust. The critical relevance of data was also reflected in the discussions today. Societies worldwide, and I think Ambassador Martinon alluded to this, are in search of the right policy balance around data. How do we ensure that data fuels innovation and economic dynamism while adequately protecting the public and individual interests? How do we ensure that data is not abused, whether for commercial interests or for the violation of human rights? As was indicated, and there were some very moving examples from the MENA region of where data had been abused precisely uh, for that end. Uh, as was indicated in the few sessions that I attended, data is a cross-cutting and an interdisciplinary issue par excellence. Data is a technological and standardization issue, but data also matters for the security of modern society and for human rights. Data is behind privacy. Data is about, also about trade. All of us in multilateral and multi-stakeholder communities will have to deal with the challenge how to address data in a more comprehensive, more sophisticated way. In addition to trust and data, many sessions focused on ethics and AI. Ethics is probably the most important aspect of the encounter of technology and humanity. Many discussions at this IGF addressed ethics by design. Can we program machines to be ethical? If yes, what should the rules and principles be? Many issues remain open, but there's a clear need for guidelines in relation to autonomous weapons. The Secretary General, as you know, has called for a ban on lethal autonomous weapons. But we also need guidelines for driverless cars or for the thousands of apps powered by AI, for face recognition software, and for so on. Perhaps for some of the future IGFs, we will need more philosophers in the room to help us with these questions. And I would like to reiterate the call that Lynn also echoed from the Secretary General that the IGF should not only be multi-stakeholder, but also multidisciplinary, uh, a multidisciplinary forum. We cannot operate in silos if we're to do justice to the formidable challenges that new technologies, including in the internet, are producing. The Internet's governance forum is in transition, like many of our institutions, that adjust to digital developments. Both the Secretary General and President Macron placed high expectations on the IGF. As was indicated in the opening statements, change is needed precisely to safeguard the public core to ensure of the internet, to ensure it's free and open with diverse content, but also safe and trustworthy. We have to safeguard that the internet, as one speaker put it, I think on the very first day, produces magic in terms of its connections, but white magic, not some of the black magic that we see now, and that it serves really truly to connect humanity, not to divide humanity, to further good rather than foment evil. The multiple efforts to strengthen the IGF have to, uh, have to enable it to rise, to contribute to the challenge of finding the wisest way to do these. And I would say I found in some of the statements the postulation of a false dichotomy between freedom and liberty on the one hand and regulation on the other. I think that's a false dichotomy. The absence of the rule of law is not freedom. The absence of the rule of law is the rule of the mightiest, is the rule of tyranny, whether by private companies and no disrespect or by autocratic leaders. And there I'd like to quote, uh, since we're in Paris, uh, a very distinguished, one of many very distinguished French thinkers, Jean-Baptiste Henri Dominique uh, Lacordiere, 
who was a political activist and priest in a time of great upheaval in Europe, 1848, which was also in the midst of an industrial revolution and societal disquiet. And the, he said the following, between the rich and the poor, the weak and the strong, the master and the servant, it is liberty which restricts and rule of law which sets us free. The rule of law obviously understood as rule of intelligent rule of law and in conformity with international standards is essentially a liberating element. The absence of it is what allows for abuse. Many such abuses were mentioned by some of our participants from Azerbaijan, from Egypt. So I think we have to listen carefully to the idea that if we want to safeguard the key, what we appreciate so much about the internet, it's probably better done through some form, I'm not, uh, it's not for me to say in what form, but some form of uh, uh, policy frameworks that uh, maintain it from abuse. The IGF will have to play an important role in strengthening digital cooperation mechanisms which are currently being considered by the UN SG's high-level panel. And the interaction which started here between the Secretary General's high-level panel and the IGF is very important. I invite all of you to contribute to the panel's discussions, in particular with proposals that should link the IGF's strengths and the need for more efficient digital cooperation mechanisms. There's a lot of need and space for innovative and effective solutions. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, there were more than 170 sessions held this past week, ranging from main sessions, open forums, workshops, to lightning sessions, and also other informal gatherings and side events. And we have to really recognize and applaud the outstanding preparatory work done by every member of the 2018 multi-stakeholder advisory group, the so-called MAG, under the guidance of the very able and distinguished guidance of Ms. Lynn St. Amour, who I think brings credit to the name of the wine rather than the other way around. Um, we also must thank all the UN staff uh, for the conference services, security, news coverage, communication outreach, remote participation, and technical infrastructure. The national, regional, and youth IGF initiatives should also be recognized as they are further expanding the importance and inclusive multi-stakeholder internet dialogue to new countries and regions. We now have more than 110 national and regional initiatives around the world, and around 50 of them were present with us this week to highlight their achievements. And a big thanks goes to all national and regional initiatives, including those who could not join us in person. Leading up to the 14th uh, Internet Governance Forum next year, innovations in programming and intersessional activities will continue to be implemented in a bottom-up manner based on feedback from the multi-stakeholder community and in line with our new mandate, which calls for greater participation from stakeholders from developing countries and improved working uh, modalities uh, with a greater focus on outcomes. Finally, and this is, this is a key point, we, we also wish to thank, to, I'd like to take this opportunity to really thank the many donors for their financial contributions to the United Nations IGF Trust Fund. And, and I really applaud the, 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 the UK for, for standing up and saying they'll pledge more. And I, I have to say, I was very impressed by the list of donors and the fact that so many private sector donors uh, are, are on that list. I think it's uh, truly exemplary in, in the contributions themselves, the mixture we have of governments uh, and the, the, the um, private sector. But let's be frank, we need to do more. I, I was trying to think of an analogy, and this probably isn't a very good one, but uh, we have some resources, but the IGF is essentially a volunteer body. I mean, the MAG are not paid. They do all the organization. The UN staff involved do it after hours. There are no UN staff exclusively dedicated to this. Um, and, you know, if we want the IGF to run like a Ferrari in terms of meeting some of the challenges set out, there has to be fuel in the tank. 
And at the moment, uh, I, I, I think the fuel probably also keeps it at a relatively low speed so that it can go the distance. But I think it will need a big injection of resources if it's uh, realistically to, to learn to, to, to live up to some of the challenges that have so appropriately been set for us it in helping coming to terms with some of the challenges. And I, I have to say, as a newcomer to this, I'm, it's my second IGF, I think given the resource constraints, it's absolutely incredible what you've achieved uh, thus far and what you've, um, the network you've created uh, across the globe. But I share the belief that we need to go to the next level, but I think we will not succeed with that without a major injection uh, not just of ideas, but the sort of resources uh, to put those ideas into uh, action. Um, and I have to say, I thank Germany uh, for taking on the challenge uh, next year, for helping uh, to um, make sure uh, we, we do better in terms of uh, representation. Um, I think it's very exciting that we'll be in Germany. I also share the view that hopefully we will be able to rotate better around uh, the continents. Um, so I wish you now after that rather lengthy concluding address a very safe trip home. Uh, much in, hopefully you'll carry with you much inspiration uh, from these, these days and much well-being after being in, in this incredible uh, city with such gracious uh, hosts and I wish you safety. Uh, online and offline, and all the very best. Thank you. Thank you very much, Assistant Secretary General. Uh, I'd just like to close with reminding you all that there's a reception upstairs um, by our next host. And also, I would also, I think I didn't um, hear this scribes being thanked, so I'd like to thank the scribes for the very hard work, uh, making it very clear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And thank you all for sticking it out until the very end. Very much appreciated. See you during the intersessionals or next year in Berlin. Thank you. Mm -hmm.